Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode three of Into the Mist. It is our Curse of Straw, the live stream campaign. Uh, just going to go through a couple quick announcements, uh, and then we will jump right into all of the fun action. Um, and I should have music happening here, and I don't. There it is. First off, again, for those that are uh, fairly new, we have moved to YouTube as our official uh, channel for our live stream. So all of our giveaways will happen in the, in the YouTube to uh, chat. We are still hosting uh, on, on Twitch, so you can see us there. Uh, but everything, all of our interactions and our giveaways and all that stuff happen on YouTube. So check us out there. Make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell icon on YouTube to get notified every time we go live. Huge thank you to Dungeons and Dragons. They create this game that we love and play on a weekly basis. Um, a massive thank you to them. We also want to thank our main title sponsor, Hero Forge. Uh, they create a online tool for creating miniatures of your characters uh, for your tabletop gaming experiences. You can check them out at HeroForge.com. All of our minis are Hero Forge minis. In fact, I just finished painting our Muskoka mini 
last night, finally, finishing him off. Um, he's very cool. You'll see him on the table soon. So thank you to Hero Forge uh, for the support. Our other main tile sponsor is Beetle and Grimm's. Beetle and Grimm's creates awesome boxed experiences for your Dungeons and Dragons campaigns. Uh, one of them is our Curse of Strahd box. And I just heard today from the B&G folks, including Matt Lillard and all those wonderful people, that uh, we are getting some more of these to give away in the future. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we already gave one in our in our premiere, but we'll continue to do that. Um, this label is from the, the Chris Estrade box, as well as a lot of other awesome items, including this amazing um, holy symbol of, of Ravenkind. Anyways, really cool stuff. Check them out, beetleandgrims.com. We appreciate your support. And uh, our other main title sponsor, uh, Sirenscape. They have an online uh, tool for creating ambience and effects and moods for your tabletop gaming experience. You can check them out at www.sirenscape.com slash realmsmith. That will let them know that we sent you. And if you uh, search realmsmith in the search bar, you'll see all the sound sets we've created for them, including one specific to this um, to this live stream, uh, into them specifically. And then they have a bunch of actual uh, licensed Dungeons and Dragons sets as well that you can check out. I want to thank our other product sponsors, WizKids, Dwarven Forge, we're using a bunch of Dwarven Forge uh, terrain today. Mithril Armory is sponsoring our natural, our D20, and uh, natural 20. I keep saying D20, I said natural 20. Anyways, our natural 20 rolls this evening, like this, every time that we hit a natural 20, either creatures or the players, you will see um, that sponsored animation. Thank you, Mithril. Um, they will be launching their, um, their new dice campaign soon. Um, we will ask them when they come on when that will ha be happening. That is at stoneheart.ca for all the information there. Um, tonight, we are giving away a D&D &D Beyond digital copy of Curse of Strahd on YouTube. Don't forget it's on YouTube. The code word is Strahd, S-T-R-A-H-D. Enter it once into the YouTube chat. Twice you'll be disqualified, so only do it once. And uh, that is uh, from our uh, digital sponsor, D&D Beyond, for powering us on a weekly basis. Our Discord slash Patreon role-playing community has absolutely exploded. Um, we're getting new patrons every day, uh, and we're so thankful for all your support out there. We had actually a patron just this past week upgrade from Master of the Realm to Legendary Hero, um, and it was quite the event. Um, two weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago, we uh, attacked the camp, uh, the Smith Guardians and I, with a bunch of vampires um, in the in, late in the evening. This is what Camp Gakis currently looks like. It will be updated tomorrow but it was half the number. Every Vardo and every tent on the map um, represent a person in our Discord. Um, I think we probably have another dozen or so to add, I think over and above this. So thank you so much to the Discord. If you're interested in role-playing, if you think that you can survive Barovia, come join us. You can check it out at www.patreon.com slash realmsmith. And that is where you can sign up at whatever level, as low as a dollar, all the way up to uh, $300, uh, lots of uh, tiers there that you can check out. In fact, for our patrons, for the Tail Weavers and our Realm Weavers, we have a seminar tomorrow on how to DM. If you've ever wanted to DM, those tiers are for you. We're teaching people how to DM. We're giving you modules to actually run in the Discord community for our Folk Hero tiers. Um, and we'll have a bunch of seminars. The seminar tomorrow is being run by Julian Kenko. He is our producer. Uh, and um, resident plot guru and all that, kind of my right-hand guy. Um, and so he is running a Dungeon Mastering 101 seminar tomorrow night live. So if you want, if you're interested in that and aren't a tail weaver or a realm weaver, um, consider upping your uh, patronage to that uh, to catch that, um, which is awesome. Last week we also had a um, how to play with a uh, seminar with Brandon Perkins. It was awesome. Uh, we have the VOD for lower tiers, but basically Hero of the Realm and Up get to be live in the Zoom session to ask questions. And he was talking about getting to the heart of your character and creating an awesome backstory and then weaving that and having it educate your uh, character a narrative. Um, and so we're thankful that he did that and it was really, really great. We do have merch. This is one of our older shirts. Um, but you can check that out below our videos on our respective channels. Um, in our Teespring store, we have a couple new ones, including the Can I Touch It shirt 
and um, the Exploding Vardo shirt. Um, that's another way that you can support our channel. This Thursday, we will have Aftermath. It is at 8 p.m. and it is a post show with um, interviews and questions and um, all kinds of awesomeness discussing this past season and the past uh, episode tonight. So we will have some of the cast on on Thursday discussing with host Hillary Z, uh, one of our Smith Guardians. Um, a note that this a week today, so next Monday is Easter Monday, we will not be live and we will not have an aftermath that week, but we will be back the following week. So after tonight, we will see you in two Mondays. Remember, on whatever channel you're watching on, if you're on YouTube, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Um, and that bell icon uh, to be notified. We thank you so much for your support, and it helps us to let you know what's going on with Realm Smith. And if you're on Twitch, hit that follow uh, button as well. Thank you so much, and without further ado, let us venture into the mists. All right, welcome everyone to episode three. Want to thank our cast for being here as well as uh, Omega Jones, AKA the Critical Bard again. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight again. Looking fabulous as usual. Um, I give you so much props for doing that on a weekly basis for us. Look, <laughs> look, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it is, and we thank you for it. Uh, and our all of our community freaks out every time they watch an episode with, with you on and see it for the first time. So thank you so much for doing that. Last we left all of you, uh, we were at Argon Vostholt. You were able to escape with a new mission uh, at hand. The ability to return the skull of Argon Vost, an ancient silver dragon, back to uh, his home. Uh, in order to light the beacon of Argonvost. Uh, this beacon would bring, from what you understand, renewed hope and um, light to the land of Barovia as a boon to your coming potential battle with Strahd von Zarevich. Um, with the Sir Godfrey Willem, uh, one of the high-ranking knights of the Order, a revenant who has been dead, alive some 400 years, or undead some 400 years, um, is with you. You've decided that you wanted to go to Gakis, uh, the camp with the of the Vistani, to ask for their help. When you arrived, you were met by Madame Eva. Madame Eva being a ancient being who now you know is as old as Strahd, if not possibly older. She asked you to be very careful how you tread with Gakis because wh when you had left for, uh, to Argon Vostolt, the camp was attacked by a contingent of vampires. Uh, Strahd's way of slapping their wrist to let them know not to trifle with him and to help you out. After some heated conversation and some deep set feelings, um, you asked if you could stay the evening in Camp Gakis uh, to be safe so that you could set out to Berez the next day in search of that skull. Madame Eva said, yes, you can stay, but please be on your way as quickly as you can. 
and she will support, but to be careful. How obvious, because his eyes are everywhere. You all settled in for the evening, and that is where we find you. Falfer, in the middle of the evening, you wake. And you hear the sounds of um, the creatures of the night outside of the tent. You feel that cold air coming off Gacchus as the rest of your companions lie around you. Um, immediately, you feel quite awake, aware, um, as if stirred by something and brought awake by something that you can't quite put your hand on or understand. As you look around, it is very dark in the tent. You only see the faint bundles of your compatriots on their bedrolls in the tent. What do you do? Can I tell if this is a feeling I've had before? Hmm. Um, give me a perception check. Okay. That is a... 12. Um... Something seems a little off. Something seems muted. As if... as if the environment has shifted slightly, but you can't quite put your finger on it. Hmm. Can I tell if there's a magical effect or some uh, something kind of restraining, ma making that mutedness happen? Um, give me an Arcana check. Okay. That is a 17. Yeah, with a 17, there's no magical, there's no magic at work necessarily, you don't think. Hmm. Okay. Um, but you feel, with a 17, you feel separated somehow from yourself, from the world around you, almost displaced slightly. So, um, so am I dreaming? Am I looking at myself? Is it an out-of-body experience that I'm experiencing? As you look back, you see your body lying in your bedroll. <laughs> Sound asleep. Okay. Uh, and I'm dreaming or I'm lucidly, I'm aware of, of this. Obviously yeah. that's me and I know it's me. Okay. Yeah. Huh. How do I look? <laughs> kidding um, uh your hair is kind of matted against your face and you've been drooling mm -hmm. so it's kind of crusted the curls up into your beard and it's all kind of connected okay so great yeah it's what, what i look actually. like okay um so i will uh i'll go over throughout the tent just looking over the other camp mates party mates around just to make sure everyone is safe i by the way i'm looking to see if there is if this is the effects of a hag over us at all seeing as this has happened in the night to us in prior circumstances mm -hmm. um you look at your friends you kind of walk the the circle and they all seem like they're sleeping soundly okay um sterling of course in his usual spot kind of sitting in his drone stance, stasis. Hmm. Right, and he's not aware. I I'm gonna go over towards him, yeah. seeing as he's in his stasis. And I'm gonna stand like, is, is, are, his, are his legs out? Like, is he against a wall or something? Sterling, how would you have gone to sleep? Um, in whatever place would give me the best vantage to keep watch while everybody rests. Yeah, that'd be like standing at the... or sitting down. Uh, probably standing. 
Okay, so you're standing basically against the back post facing the door, to the kind of the flap to the tent. And there's okay. like a U of your party around you. I will walk over to him and <laughs> and just like go like, hello, uh, hi, are you awake? <laughs> As you kind of speak out, your, your, your voice echoes slightly and then is caught almost like it's taken from the essence of reality. And if he was awake, my understanding is if he sees anything, it kind of, he, 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 he'd be able he's to see. awake. He, yeah. yeah, he'd be able to see. Godfrey, so he, when the party sleeps, what do you do? He's probably sitting on like a chair or something, um, stationary, just watching. Um, whether it's the door, whether it's them, his eyes just kind of glance around. Um, he's quiet, but he's just sitting and watching. Um, thinking okay. like he always does and you hmm. see godfrey sitting he doesn't see you sterling doesn't see you okay so i'm going to assume i'm i'm in some kind of dream state at this point i i am doing the thing in front of sterling's eyes he doesn't see me um i'm not gonna touch anyone okay. i'm going to uh get up and go out of the front of the tent attempting to move aside the sheet or the door or the leather that makes up the 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 uh, the tent kind of doorway yeah. and see if i have if i have any corporeal self to my, to me your hand passes through the flap haha <laughs> okay um okay i'll go out of the tent and i'll look around is there anything by the campfire okay so as you go out the campfire is out um there's a slight bit of moonlight that passes through the fog and the mist. And you can see that the fire, the large fire um, that usually exists outside of your tent is just smoldering. Light, light embers. You imagine it's the equivalent of about three, four in the morning. You see Esmeralda's mm -hmm. tent and the slight moonlight just glinting off of the metal bits. Um, and something catches your eye out in the tree line. Almost like one of the trees begin to twist and turn and move. And it begins hey. to slink in your direction. And you watch as it approaches the tent. Okay, so the tree is moving towards the tent. I'm not moving towards it. It's moving towards me. From what you can tell. I will slowly back up. In an instant, it goes and it starts to move really quickly towards you and then it stops. And as it stops, a head kind of lifts and these eyes open, white, lidless. And you see what is like foliage in, on the top of the head begin to like grow out into long, white, gray hair. Uh, okay, uh, I will um, attempt not to crap my pants in that moment um and uh, and 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 control my bladder simultaneously trying to do those both both those things difficult uh, at this time of night given my age um and i'll uh try to hold it together and speak out to this this thing with Again. my new words <laughs> as it and it stops like three feet from you Okay. And you see this creature is taller than you are, some seven feet. You see purplish skin, white teeth bared, a crooked back as the crone that you know as Morgantha stands before you. Ah, crap. I've heard nothing of this person before, just for the record. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the name sounds creepy. I'll say that much. Um, okay. I will, I'll, again, I'll just try to try to plant my feet, but like uh, hold my ground, pull out both my daggers and just say, you shall not pass. Your daggers melt as they turn 
and they turn almost into liquid metal as they pour over your hands. I, uh, I will Freezing your hands run. into fists. The metal begins to grow up your arms as it slinks closer and closer to your chest. As you begin to claw at yourself, it goes into your mouth and covers your face as you begin to suffocate, unable to breathe. I, uh, she walks I up towards to snap myself okay. out of the dream. <laughs> okay, how do you want to do that? Um, I am going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, shoot. So I have no longer daggers. I have metal fists. I try to punch myself in the face to wake up. Okay. Uh, the metal fist through your face. No purchase. <sighs> okay. I'll turn and run towards my body in the tent and try to wake myself from the sleep that I'm in. You turn and you run into the tent. And as you run through the flap, you stop dead in the middle as the hag stands beside Sterling. And as she stands, you see that she's running her long crooked black nail along his face. And it's making this sound. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll again, uh, assuming that my, you know, my corporeal self is on the ground, like I can't actually take any physical action against this person right now. Um, you know what, Jay? No, I'm gonna cast a spell. Oh shoot! Wrong character. I hate when that happens. Ah. <laughs> uh, um. Okay. I really don't know what to do. I'm. I'm gonna go to my. I'm gonna go to my body, try to wake myself up out of this dream nightmare. Okay. You go over and you start like basically clawing at yourself, your hands passing through, no purchase. You start to scream and your screams are muffled by this. Your eyes begin to, and your, and your, your, your senses begin to fade as you feel yourself beginning to suffocate. You look down and Falfer begins to Convulse. Move. Falfer begins to convulse in your sleep. I'm gonna go. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go and uh, uh, we 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 knew about this at some point. There was something um, more. I'm, I'm going to go to the fire in the in the camp. Okay. I'm gonna run, I'm gonna try to, if there's time, Jay, I'm gonna try to find a lit torch. Okay. Now, you didn't, or you can I, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, is there is there any fire around? I'm just trying to think, maybe fire will do something. Not lit. All there was was embers in the fire. As you're frantically looking around, not quite sure what to do, you look in the direction of Sterling and her, and she's standing right in front of him. She digs her nail into his head and she begins to carve a symbol. I'll, I'll attack her. I'll, I'll, with whatever life I have left in me, I'll, uh, I'll head over to her and I'll, I'll punch her in the back of the face, which is the head part. Yeah right through as you tumble out the other side and you all and you basically half into where Dimitri lies things start to go dark your I'm, vision starts to blur I'm so useless right now I have no idea what and to all do. of a sudden you wake <gasps> what little sunlight comes through the fog you can see coming through the tent it is morning. You feel weak. You felt this before. Your hit point <laughs> maximum is now reduced by six points. Ah. Uh, yes, fine, fine. But the rest of us got a long rest. The rest of you got a long rest. You did not fall for it. I have a legit I, question. Yeah. This was a dream, obviously, of whatever happened, but did that happen to Sterling? And if so, would I have heard the sounds of nails against a metal person's skull? 
as I'm sitting next to it. Yeah, give me a perception check. Nineteen. Yeah, with a nineteen, as you, we'll back up a bit, and as you, sle- as you watched, and as you just sat, quite creepily actually, while everyone else slept, um, you do hear uh, the slight scratching sound that is clearly coming from Sterling. Hmm. Yeah, I. I- I feel like Godfrey would have noticed and not seen anything, but have been confused and gotten up and at least walked over to Sterling. Yeah, and when you walk over, you see that there is a symbol carved in his forehead. Okay. It, it looks almost like a tree. I do not understand the ways of this camp. And I go and sit back down, because I just think this is some Vistani shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I sit down. Sterling, um, what are the rules of your um, sentry mode? I'm basically sitting there wide awake while the system repairs itself. Okay. So, give me a perception check with advantage, please. Uh, okay. Eighteen. Um, with an eighteen, you feel something on your forehead, um, and it kind of brings attention to it um, as you sit there in sentry mode. And then you see Godfrey kind of get up. He comes over. He looks at you. You. He shakes his head and he goes back and he sits down. So when I feel this on my forehead, I'm able to react and try to like grab at it, like you would with a fly or a bug or something. Yeah, and as you do, you just feel your forehead, um, and you feel like something. Is it has been scratched into your into your head? Oh, that's it's a lot of fun. Um, cool. <laughs> okay. Um, but I didn't I didn't feel anything yeah. anything else. It's just that. This, yeah. So, I guess I'm confused. Yeah. Uh, but I'll continue my watch and a little bit more alertly. I guess now. Okay. And you can't even see what it is. You just, you know that something, you don't know if it's maybe a scratch from earlier that you got in combat or or whatever, but Mm -hmm. you're feeling it for the first time. Yeah. So I'm thinking to myself that I'm going to have to buff that out later. Yeah. With a mirror. Yeah. All right. Back to Falfer. Falfer, you wake in the morning. Dim light coming through the tent. Anyone else awake at this point? Uh, Godfrey Godfrey is. And as you you wake, Godfrey is sitting. Quite creepily watching you. <laughs> yeah, I see you stir. Good I, uh, morning. Say, uh, but, but is it? Uh, forgive I, me. Uh, I simply was. Uh, this is the worst night, or certainly one of the worst nights I've had in a long, long time. I apologize. I could inquire about some tea, if that would help you. Some tea, yes, perhaps, perhaps some tea would help. I uh, had a terrible, terrible nightmare, and it's not the first time. I have not dreamed in a very long time. So forgive me for not understanding as much as I should. Uh, Let me uh, simply say this, that uh, it's probably better that you're not dreaming. Um, (laughs) And all of a sudden I feel a little bit uh, lighter on my feet for some reason. As you hear the, the familiar songs, and instruments that the Vistani fill the camp and the tent. Mm. Obviously, somebody has come out and some little ways away is beginning to tune their instruments and, and play a, a morning tune. Um, I'll, 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 I'll stop Godfrey in his tracks and go, forgive me, I'm, I, I must, 
I must go find out what this m- music is. <laughs> and uh, I'll no, you know, I'll look around in the tent as if anyone is awake yet. Anyone else? No. You look over at Sterling, and he's still in sentry mode, but you still see the symbol that was scratched into his head. I st- so I do see the symbol on him. Yeah. Okay, so I will go over to Sterling. And, at, and at the, can can I uh, at the sound of Falfer talking and hearing him walking around? Yep. I'm gonna clutch one of my axes on my chest and just roll so I can see him and <laughs> okay. see where he is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll walk over to, to Sterling, um, who's standing up. So I'll, I'll knock on his leg. I guess I'm reaching up to his belly yeah. at this point. Knock on his belly and go, uh, uh, Sterling, uh, uh, you have something on your forehead. I thought I felt something last night. And it's, uh, I can't, I can feel it here now. I'll have to. We'll have to buff that out, I think. No, well, do you know what it was? It, it was the hag again, or hag. one of them. Really? Yes, she visited us in the night, and and I had a terrible, terrible, terrible dream, and now I'm feeling the same way I was last time the hag came and and showed her, or what was it, the daughters, or I don't know. It was different than last time, but but it was still the same. You know what I mean? Yes, I I had hoped she had forgotten about us. Perhaps we should talk to the Vistani about this, and maybe while we are taking care of some issues, maybe they might be able to take care of this one for us. That would be Uh, very helpful. Is the condition that Falfer has, because I I think I had it before, is that a curse? Uh, well, you don't know. Is it a curse? Uh, you hear them talking Digging deeply into my my knowledge yeah. <laughs> of what happened in the past. Yep. Would would I identify that as a curse? Uh, give me a uh, for, uh, religion check. Oh, While well, that's happening, um, yeah, that's a natural did. twenty. Hey. Uh, Godfrey just looks over and Godfrey just looks over and says, "I did notice that. I just thought it was a Vistani thing." Yes, certainly we uh, we've been dealing with this this uh, crazy old uh, witch-like creatures in uh, in our adventures since the very beginning, and they seem to come back at the least uh, at, at the least opportune times. Does, you said it's a symbol. Does anybody know what it Is means? It? Well, I can tell you it looks like a little tree. tree. This guy sits up to look at the tree on his head. Yeah, yeah can I identify it too, Jay? Like, yeah. can I tell what it is? Yeah, so, sorry, with your religion check, Dave, you don't know uh, if it's, you don't, it's not a curse that you know of. You haven't heard of a curse like that before. Um, yeah. Uh, give me a history check, Belfer. Is that there is any part a, of me that's, uh, sorry. 12. Um, yeah, with the 12, you don't recognize, it, it looks like just a, some sort of rune that rep- that looks like a tree. Hmm. But you don't know what it what it applies to or comes from. Or Is there any part of me that's polished enough that I can see my own reflection, like in my forearm or something? Yeah, you get your sword or something like that, and you, you look and you can finally see it, and yeah, it looks like just a... The, a rune in the shape of a tree. It, uh, am I able to to uh, maybe try a religion check or something on it? Or well, what are you trying to decipher or, or figure out? Just see if I recognize a history check. So twelve. Yeah, same thing. Just looks like a rune in the shape of a tree. Okay. Nothing. Uh, nothing yet you recognize. Mm. Is it causing you? Hey. Uh, no, I, I just, I, I, I felt it happening, um, but it, it, it wasn't painful. And uh, I reached up and I didn't feel anything except this scratch here. I saw it happening. 
the hag was like with her long nail she was like scratching into your skull and it was uh it was quite disturbing making a crazy sound and I, i'm not sure if the sound was real or if it was in my head but it was not very nice at all if she is able to injure us in our sleep without being here physically then that represents a huge danger, does it not? Well, we know Jane. we got to keep the fires going, or she's gonna come. Ex- just explain that for me. Uh, I... That's we what they told us. Yeah, season two, episode ten. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> the Mistani's told us that Morganta's been visiting, and we got to keep the fires going. <laughs> right. Season 2, episode 10. <laughs> you know, last week. <laughs> um, hmm. Am I awake mm. yet during any of this? Or am I... Yeah. I mean, anybody who wanted wanted to have woken during this exchange, they're talking loud enough that they're... Hmm. Okay. Good morning. <clears throat> What's all this talk about hags? <clears throat> Me drink. The... Sterling, what is that thing on your head? I don't know. Uh, it's a symbol of some kind. What? Oh, is, is that a, one of your runes? One of your upgrades? I don't believe so, no. Uh, usually my runes would glow some some way, but no, this this feels embedded, scratched in. Uh, and and mm. Falfer said that he saw it happen, and the, the hag did it. Uh, yeah, she kind of ruined your forehead. <laughs> Sorry. This is the same hag that had attacked you in your dreams before, yes? Uh, I think she was a different one. Um, um, but I'm not. Hey, Jake, can I do? Do I know that for sure that she was different or the same? She was the same one. The the, the matriarch, the the mother okay. of the hex. Okay. Yeah. So yes, uh, yes, she was the same one as before. And and I think you guys were told what her name was. That her name Morganta. was Morgantha. Yeah. Hmm. That's so right, Morgantha. Hmm. So I'm just trying to understand what it is. What is it that she wants from you particularly? Hopefully vengeance. Perhaps. Well, we all, I mean, we all destroyed that, uh, or reclaimed their inhabitants. Is this hag going to be a problem? Well, I'm certain like... I am not at my at my best for fighting. That's for sure. And the last time, uh, what happened to Muskoka? He was down for the count for a while as well, I believe. So it does affect us. Yes. It, it seems like if we keep the fires going, they stay away. But we're not so great at remembering things. <laughs> to be fair, there's a lot to keep up with. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I would like to swat this particular fly. If it is possible, if you do think that they might, we could pass this on and let the Vistani know that that since we are in the middle of doing many other things, perhaps they would have the capacity to take care of this for us. I I would be more than happy. Perhaps they could even cure us. I can't even remember whether or not they helped last time. Do you do you recall Muskoka? They saved Muskoka's life. Yes, they did. If they could bait her somehow, but how do you fight somebody that only comes in your dreams? Poorly. <laughs> Don't sleep. Well, Sterling, are you affected at all by this? As I step closer and take a look at this rune, Jay, is there anything that I... Uh, if I did any, like an arcana check or something that I would know if he's affected, if this affects him. The games we play are the stories we create. We just went to that's commercial. Cool. Just as a no, check. Hey, that's, that's a great commercial that I could watch. It, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh, I rolled a nine. Ooh. 
Yeah, uh, with a nine, uh, no. I mean, you can't really tell. It doesn't, it seems mundane. It seems like just a, a symbol that's been carved crudely into his forehead. Uh, can, there must uh, can be I ask a an... reason why. Sorry. Okay, can I ask another question about what I might know about this condition? Given that this, I think this is like the third time we've seen it. Do I know if it's a poisoning or a disease? Uh, give me a medicine check. 19. Um, you can tell with a 19 that he's weakened. Uh, his heart is beating at a slower pace. He doesn't seem to be at his fullest. He's clammy. Um, but you can't really tell the source of it. It's not a curse. You've already established that. You don't yeah. think it's a curse. Um, but it does seem to be some sort of drain on his life force that exists. So you're saying maybe. <laughs> so with a 19, maybe he's maybe it's poison. It's not poison. <laughs> Is it, so poison or, or disease though? Ni no. Neither. No, neither. Oh. Sorry, Falfer. I'd like to help you. Uh, I mean, I I would really appreciate not having these stupid hags chase us down in the night again. That would be that would be great. Let, let, let me try one thing, and I'm gonna put both hands on the sides of Falfer's face. Hmm. And I'm going to spend one HP from my Lay on Hands feature. And just a slight glow as I concentrate. <laughs> How about now? No effect. Well, uh, actually, if you had any... Did you have all your hit points when you went to sleep? Falfer? Yes. It, oh. You were at maximum. I was max. Yeah, I was at max. So, uh, Yeah. You don't get your temporary hit point, the, the temporary reduction back, but you okay. nothing happens. No effect. I, uh, I say, uh, thank you, Dimitri, but that was, uh, I mean, it was intimate and close, but that's about it. Mm. Perhaps there is someone at the camp that can give us any more insight into this for oui. both of you. I, I'd like to go outside and get some like coal from the fire and come back and put like a, a parchment on Sterling's head and try to etch out the scratch on his head onto the parchment so I can show people it. Okay. All right. So who's trying to get information about the etching and what's happened? And for, well, first of all, what information are you trying to get? So each person tell me what information you're trying to get and then we'll do investigation checks. So for you, well, Dave, I, you're, try, you're going around with the symbol trying to find out if the, 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 if it means anything to anybody. Okay. Uh, and and I think <coughs> Sterling maybe should stay here <laughs> until we know what this means. Okay. Because if it's like the mark of the hag devil, like we don't want him walking around, then they like, we got to kill our friend. I'd rather just go around with the paper. <laughs> okay. Do you say this, Dave? Like Sterling stay back? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, these are my <coughs> brothers and sisters now. I've, I've taken the blood right. We're... The family. I don't think they would just turn their backs on me overnight. No, I. But but it's true, Sterling. Yes. I mean, unless we know what this means, we we kind of are are stabbing in the dark. And how about this? I will stay with you. We will uh, let the others go and find out whatever information they can, and uh, we'll we'll play cards or something. No. If they just say right. that all it is is an act like a tree, it looks like a tree, then okay. Then we keep going. All at right. least for the time being. We know that we're safe with our friends here at this camp, but this camp has been attacked so many times. Yeah, and if you are now true. a beacon for whatever this is, it's best to keep you safe just for now. I'll try to buff it out here then. No, no, no. Let. Well, I mean... Perhaps if I mean if you so desire, but I do think that perhaps someone might be able to uh, help us maybe uh, uh, identify what it is, and they might need to see it or drag their hands on it or something. You never know. I mean, perhaps we wait a little. 
And I hate to say this, but... And I hope this isn't the case. But this might be something where buffing it back to normal or buffing it out is not... Might not help you. Right. We need to find out what this is. All right, then I will stay and I will... I will leave this alone. To fall for you've got playing cards. And I, uh, I will make sure we find some somewhere. I'm, I'm sure someone here has one. A pack of playing cards. Anyone? Anyone here? Okay. Um, I thought I did. Have you ever I played? Mind. Have you ever played Stones in the Circle? No. What's that? It's a you. You draw a circle on the ground, and you throw stones, and the one who gets it in the circle wins. I always win. All right. <laughs> we'll give you a run for your money. Okay. Right. Okay. So, Dave, you're I looking look like run. Sorry. Go ahead. I'll watch while I put my armor on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get dressed too. Not a scene. <laughs> we we can montage this. Him. Putting his armor on. You all done your armor. Mine on too. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I'll go time. out uh, with my etching yep. and all, or my charcoaling. Yep. Mm. And I'd like to try to maybe find somebody that's, uh, I don't know, a little older. Okay. You know, I don't want to find a kid. Okay. They're going to say it's a tree. Yeah. I want to find somebody that's a little older and wiser and, and ask him, like, hey, uh, does this symbol mean anything to you? <laughs> okay. Investigation check. Okay. Natural 20. I love these dice. Beep, 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 beep. Beep. Very good. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, with your natural 20, um, somebody definitely recognizes it. Um, and oh, you ask okay. a number of people. And what you're able to piece together is that it appears to be some sort of fey uh, mark um, that represents l life in the Fey world. Hmm. Uh, okay. Any idea why somebody might carve that into another person's head? They look at you really concerned. I wait for an answer. <laughs> Shake their heads. No. No. You never seen it carved in it like No. A guy? Okay. <laughs> I would like okay, Alfred thanks. and Sterling to make dexterity checks, please. <gasps> oh, seriously? Yeah. Oh, because hey, you're playing a game. Not saves. You're playing a game. Checks. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. You don't scare oh. me like that. <laughs> Ten. Okay. You have so little trust. <laughs> Fourteen. Falfer wins. Round one. <laughs> Anyone else doing anything? Uh, I'm gonna I would get a like second to... opinion. <laughs> Fair. You've exhausted like, let... your so... information. On that. I'm gonna go uh, and uh, I'll room. pick up a stone and try my luck as well. Okay. To get hey, 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 Dimitri, what? we're playing a game here. This is a gentleman's game. I was winning. You are not playing part of the game. And so, like, if you want to play the game, you have to play in the brackets. Me and Sterling first, the winner of our round will then play you, and then if you want to play, you have to join the next round. But you cannot just throw a stone in the circle! It's crazy! <laughs> um, forgive me, I didn't realize it was a, it was a two-man contest. Well, then, ask next time. Sheesh, okay, we have to... S no, I was in the lead, let's continue. All right, I, go, I play the winner. I go over to Esmeralda. <clears throat> Forgive me for being forward, but do we defeat Strahd by playing stones? You know, I would say hard no on that one, but seeing as how this is a rough place, I think maybe, maybe a few minutes of a semblance of fun before our world gets crumbled into pieces again for the day. But I agree with you. I, I think as soon as Muskoka comes back, we need to figure out a way uh, of how we, how we solve this problem. I just do not understand 
the game they seem to play. Is I it don't a either. preparation of a spell? Do they... No. I think it's almost <laughs> like a... You would, uh, a, a stronger, more honorable person would, would have come up with like a feats of strength situation. But I think among the three of them, it's more of like a best two out of three. Whoever is skilled at mi throwing minor objects. I will watch and attempt to understand. We did not do these things 400 years ago. Yes, imagine if it was like a fight to the death, but no stakes, stakes are very low, and skill is also very low. No bloodshed, just stones upon the ground. No. I... Just pride. Your pride is, is hurt a little bit. I understand pride. Yeah. So imagine like a momentarily, like your pride is hurt for like maybe five minutes and then you're like on for the rest of your day. I see. I will... I will sit back and watch. And can we roll we are again? Ready to go. We can go. Can we roll again, Jay? Yeah. Okay. This game is stacked in your favor. You're closer to the ground. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I'm, I'm throwing. Please, I rolled a nine. Boop. Sorry, I. Jinx. <laughs> and I'll lean into Godfrey like and whisper. I'm like, this is more of like a, one of those. Uh, it displays of, of, of male ego. When we displayed male ego, it was in the bedroom. I will <laughs> understand this differently. Oh, yes, understandably so. Different, uh, different times, different times. We still sword fight. <laughs> oh. Brandon, your role, please. <laughs> Maybe not what it counts. <laughs> I rolled an eight. Oh, Falfer wins again. He's, okay. I told you, you're closer uh, uh, to the ground. You don't have to throw as far. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 okay, so that's round one for me. Now it's uh, Dimitri's turn, and we'll see who wins that one. Muskoka, uh, while you're out uh, at, of the tent, um, you're approached by uh, one of the elders, and they inform you that Contrary to Madame Eva's guidance, they have actually sent some contingents out to Berez to try and soften the outskirts of the ruins for your approach. Oh my um, gosh. And out of game, uh, the Discord Vistani Tailweavers will be receiving tomorrow a module that they can run for the folk hero tier um, oh. to run um, basically a, a scarecrow hunting mission uh, for people. So that we'll be releasing tomorrow to help the party. Yeah, so there's that. Oh, okay, that's wow. great news. There, is there one for like hunting a Morgantha and her sisters or mm. no? That's no, next oh, okay. man. So, okay, <clears throat> so uh, we'll have to... On my way back with the, uh, with my paper and my new knowledge, yeah. Uh, I like to, I li when I get close to the tent, I want to pick up a stone and try to throw it into the circle. Uh, before I do that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my cantrip guidance, give myself a little boost. Okay, so on your way back, Dimitri, you get a turn. Ah, all right, let, let me see. Seems like a good enough stone for, for tossing about or not. <laughs> I rolled an eight. I, I rolled a 19. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> Like his uh, 19 knocks your stone and then bounces off and then bounces into the middle. Like he hit your I stone and banked it to hit into the stone. <laughs> into the circle. I lean over towards towards Sir Godfrey back. Look how they go uh, strictly for size. <laughs> <laughs> I'm say this. I would say that I'll turn to Dimitri and the others and say, I'll say this. I'm not even feeling my best. <laughs> no, no, Falfer, Falfer, I, I'm not even convinced this is a regulation circle. Come on, Dimitri. It's fine. Do I do I throw another now? Or? Yes, it's best two out of best two out of three. 
Right, right. You're going down. Inability to perform. Oh. I rolled a 13. And I rolled a 4. Please let me throw my stone Dimitri in now. Wins. Uh-huh. I want to just two. come over and chuck it in the middle of their game. Okay, so as you walk through the tent, you see the trucking stones. Dimitri, they oh. each throw stones, and then you throw the, your stone in. Okay, I got a I got a 21 without adding the D4. So I'm going to add the D4. Anyways, it's a 22. <laughs> So oh, interference uh, on the play. I'm going, hey, from hey, the, hey, listen. From listen. the tent flap, lobs it across the tent into the center of the, of the circle. It does not we used count. to play this as kids. It was, it's like the easiest game. It's a child's game. It's you, a you, man, but, man game. I'll, I'll but, walk into the tent, <laughs> just ignoring them. Okay. But it's a two-man game. You may not child's do that. Game. Child's child. game. I am one-eighth child. That's why you graded it. <laughs> So uh, I asked about the uh, the tree. Yes, what did you find out? Apparently, it's just some sort of fey mark that represents life. Why would a hag carve life onto my head? Yeah, I perhaps, don't know. Perhaps That's she what... wants to live inside of your head? <laughs> I, I did ask if they knew about a time when you would carve this into somebody's head and they said well they didn't say anything they just looked at me weird right oh uh, well that can't hmm. be good live in could she live inside my head i have enough enough minds in the amalgam we we it's, it's together we now. are all one but there's we don't need more especially not one of her no we need to find a way to defeat her because this seems like almost an impossible task. Perhaps Sterling, you were right about the idea. Oh, wait a moment. Are are hags uh, undead, like not alive? Are they alive and not dead? Anyone know that for sure? I think they're Hi. just old. Hello. Oh. Mr. I am the undead know. in the room, and a hag is not a dead. Yeah, From it was a I understand. Question. Yeah. Yeah. They would give undead right. a bad name. <laughs> That's true. Especially given our new friend. <laughs> yes. Who's super cool, by the way. Thank you for joining us. It's very nice. So should uh, we uh, head on our way? Oh, by the way, uh, one of the elders told me that um, some of the uh, village people have gone ahead to Bres to help us out a little bit. <laughs> Oh, that is. What was yeah. you just did? Uh, it's uh, I don't know. Well, if we are off, let's be prepared as best as we can be. And I'll yeah. take out my sword again and just kind of hold it. Um, and two bursts of uh power will come from. Godfrey, as I cast aid twice, okay, um, at third level. Okay. So now I don't know if Falfer will be affected by it or not, but everyone's hit point maximum will go up by ten. Ooh! Wow. Jay, what? Jay? Jason, what's the ruling? Uh, you get ten hit points, but you still, when you come back down past those, it's still back. So you okay. don't, you don't get your max plus the ten. You get t whatever you have now plus ten. Yep. What happened to the five that we got earlier? Do we still that's, that's gone. gone? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's why gone. this is a new casting of the spell. Okay. That's great. It's even so. There's just ten temporary. No. Feels strong. Your hit point maximum goes up by ten for what? eight hours. For eight hours. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. So yeah, I mean, you're, it's going to heal you as well. Does that ten? But it stay there, mother yeah. bitch, um, for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Cool. Incredible. All right. What's the plan? We're gonna so, walk to Perez, and then when so, we're no, really no, close, I'm gonna no, cast no, wait. no, no, wait, Dimitri, you're shot. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Really? No, wait, it's, 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 I just need important. to find out. I just need to find out this one game. It's easy. This Go, Dimitri, you right? lost. I won. I threw, I beat both of you. Shh, uh, please, Turtle, stop talking. Go ahead, Dimitri. Right, here we go. 
It's a three. Oh, a 12. Okay, we've declared the winner. Good, let's move on. <laughs> wow. All right. Balfour, are you coming? Because you're kind of sick. Yeah. That's good. Oh, I'm, I feel you. great. I feel great. I'm actually, um, I feel, uh, I feel I'm, yeah, I'm still feeling a little bit down, but then also a little bit up. It's weird. I don't know. Okay. I, I don't want to leave him here only for the the fact that this camp just keeps getting attacked because of us. Yes. Can we just bring him along and then yeah, if we need okay. to rest, if we need to... I, I would yeah. just hate to leave him here. I would also yeah. prefer to come if that's okay. <laughs> not rather not be alone. I do not think anyone needs to stay behind. For where we are going, we will need Every single last one of you. Do you have advice for the battle that is to come? To don't die. Mm. Mm. Strong yes. advice. I, I do not know much about Baba Lasaga, but if I am correct, she is old. She has power. She will be a challenge. <sighs> Sounds like the usual in Barovia. But if your stones will inspire you for the hours to come, then I hope they have done their purpose. Yes, yeah, think of it like an analogy for life. You aim for the middle, for the, for you aim, you set your aim and then you do your best to hit the mark. And if you're very good, like myself, you actually win a lot. Yes, I'm, I'm convinced that whatever comes our way, we will have the stones to confront it. See, just like that. Good one, Dimitri. Good one, what? Good analogy. Ah, thank you. Are we ready? I believe time should be used wisely. Yes. All right. You gather your things and you head out towards Berez. Um, on the road, it takes several hours to arrive. Um, it is the equivalent of about 10 a.m. when you leave Camp Gakis. Um, and you travel for some, I think it's, let me find out. I believe I said some four hours last time, right? To get from Argonvost Holt? Like four or five, yeah. yeah. So it takes you four to five hours to get back to Argonvost Holt, and it is just south of there. Um, you pass Bone Grinder, you pass Velaki, you turn off the Svalik Road, heading south toward Argonvost Holt. And you arrive in Argonvost Holt, um, the equivalent of a, uh, 1.32 o'clock in the afternoon, you think it is, as you begin to cross the manor. Is there anything you want to do at this point before you continue into Berez? And as you kind of cross Argonvost Holt and its impending uh, stature, you look down into the valley of Berez you can see in the distance. Um, thick, thick fog covering it, so you can't really quite make out what exists beyond. Hmm. Yes, I, two, two items on Muskoka's list. One, uh, as we walk, I'm going to suggest that maybe at some point we should uh, keep an eye out for some horses or something, because his walking is getting crazy. Uh, and when we go in towards Berez, can I hold an action? Can I hold it for like an hour until it's time? You can keep How long can holding I hold an it? action. Like if we're not in, in an initiative, you can say that you continue to hold an action. That's yeah. Fine, depending on what it is. Yeah. So once we get c close to Berez, yeah. I'm going to be holding uh, an action that once we uh, see Baba Lasagna, that I'm going to cast uh, Beacon of Hope on the party. <laughs> you just killed Brandon. Like, you just destroyed him. 
Okay, it, you're gonna you're gonna cast Bernardo. What, sorry? Bernardo in the in the YouTube chat. Okay, suggested that name. It's a good name. Okay, I'm gonna cast uh, Beacon of Hope. Beacon of Hope. Okay. Uh, on the party. Okay. All right. You begin the descent into Berez. All right. As you start to approach, you head into a deep valley uh, on either side, mountains and hills, snow-capped. You can see in the distance. You come to an area that is a field. Um, the, the ground begins to feel a little squishier, but it's a massive kind of open area. All of a sudden, you hear the sounds of battle. But the fog in this area has grown so thick that you can barely see more than 60 feet in any direction. Suddenly, the fog takes on the forms of soldiers on horseback, charging across the field. They collide with armored pike bearers wearing deviled horned helms. As each soldier falls in battle, it turns to fading in, in sorry, it turns into fading mist. Hundreds more soldiers collide in a storm of screams and clashing metal. Jason, is, can we tell, is this something that's happened here before? Like, is this showing us or de a depiction of something previously ex existing? You imagine that's kind of what it is. Um, Godfrey, all of a sudden, the memory, a faint, faint memory of this place crosses your, your, your mind. This is the site of a great battle between the Order of the Silver Dragon and Strahd's troops some four centuries ago. Many of your brethren fell here. Is this also where I fell? You don't remember. I don't remember, I didn't think so. Um... You don't know, you don't quite know. And this is this is a very faint, faint memory that you're connecting and that you haven't thought in, I mean, you can't even remember when you remembered it last. Okay. Um, yeah, if anybody happens to glance at Godfrey, you can see that he's watching and walking a little slower, taking it in. Godfrey, are you? Are you all right? I... I am fine. Has, has this scene... Is, is it bothering you? Is, 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 you've slowed down and... It matters not. Let us... Continue and find the one who holds the skull, so we can return it and light the beacon. Yes, of course. If you need a moment, don't hesitate to tell us. I... I will be fine. Let us carry on. Can anyone tell if this is magic or what? How is this happening before us? Yeah, can we sense that this is a... Can I try an Arcana check? I get advantage with uh, one of my runes. Sure. It does, yeah, yeah, seven. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can't quite put your finger on it. Um, you're not my quite finger sure goes right before. through. It's like they're made of mist. <laughs> I think we would all be kind of curious about like, well, what's causing yeah. this? Like, is it just the physical yeah. illusion or it what? Feels, it feels more environmental um, than it does magical. Um, like the result of something. Like the land itself is scarred with the memory? Yeah. Hmm. Mm. As you continue to walk, you hear a thunderous roar, and second la seconds later, a huge dragon made of silver mist glides overhead, 
dispersing enemies' soldiers with its, each flap of its mighty wings. Would this be the same dragon that we saw as, as the statue? You imagine the makeup and the look of the creature is the same. You see the same type of horns, uh, the same kind of stature and same um, details. I, I want to put my hands out to the party and just say, wait, let's see where he falls to see where his skull lies. That's what I was going to say. It's too late, Falfer. Right. You watch so as free. its long reptilian tail slices through the air above you as the dragon carves a swath through the fog. In the distance, you see a fleeting glimpse of the man or Argon Vostolt overlooking the valley. And you watch as this dragon kind of flies over and then dissipates. The Godfrey. Godfrey's gotten down on one knee as the dragon went over and just kind of watched. Sorry, not to cut you off. No, that's okay. As I turn and I look, uh, seeing him do that cuts me off and I realize I have my answer. Hmm. In your head, Dimitri, you hear, light my beacon. I'll walk over to Sir Godfrey and I'll say, that voice I was telling you before, it speaks to me again, beckons me to light the beacon. Then let us go on. Let us. And he stands up and places a hand on Dimitri's shoulder. We have a task that will be hard, but through the will of Argenvost, we shall prevail. As you continue on, as quickly as it came, the fog begins to clear slightly. As you begin to see swampland ahead. The trail hugs the river for several miles. The dirt and grass soon turn to marsh as the trail dissolves into spongy earth, pockmarked with stands of tall reeds and pools of stagnant water. A thick shroud of fog covers all. Scattered throughout the marsh are old peasant cottages, their walls covered with black mildew, their roofs mostly caved in. These decrepit dwellings seem to hunker down in the mire, as though they have long since given up on escaping the thick mud. Everywhere you look, the black clouds of flies dart about, hungry for blood. The fog is much thinner on the far side of the river, where a light flashes amid a dark ring of standing stones. What do you do? These flies are crazy. Do you see something ahead though? A ring Hello? of stones. Yes. Another, uh, another ring of stones. Are those the the runes? Some kind of st structure. So Godfrey, can, can you make anything of this? My apologies. What do we say again? Um, so basically, you see a ruined village ahead of you. And mm -hmm. then to your left across the river, you see standing stones, basically like obelisks or monoliths that stand, and there's mm -hmm. a flickering light dancing among them. Do I know anything about those stones? History check with disadvantage. The audacity. Yeah. <laughs> You've been stuck in their manor a long time. I have. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. 
Um, that's a 10. Okay. With the 10, um, you remember they're old, very old. Mm-hmm. You, they were there before Strahd came to this land, before you were trapped in Argenvost, Holt. They're ancient. I know they are old. I just do not know more than that. How old? Old enough. At least as old as us, me, Argenvost, unsure. I, I my memory is, is, it, it falters, sorry. Hmm. And is that, is that a river between us and those stone pillars? And yeah, it's, it's the Luna River that runs south. How would we get across? Or do we do we even attempt it? The flickering light, it, it must have been lit by someone. Perhaps the, our answer lies there. Give me a perception check, Dimitri. Natural 20. Ooh. Very nice. Um, With your natural 20, uh, it almost appears like something or someone is trying to signal you. Um, You can see through the fog just for a moment, and you see that it's a lantern, and it's swinging in your specific direction as you approach. Hmm. Hmm. Upon upon second glance, I I think it's a lantern that's... It's moving, and I think someone might be signaling us. Is it a... To be honest, it, it, it's probably a trap, but it's probably a trap from the person we want to go and meet. Oh, mm. if it's friend or foe, I want to see what this thing is. I agree. Hmm. Then let us carry forward. Okay. Yes. That's you scare. Me- You make your way towards the river, um, and you come to the edge of it, and it's quite dark. The bank is fairly steep into the center. Um, You can't see in the center of the river, but you can see the steady slope, and then it comes up the other side of the bank. Hmm. Rivers. I hate rivers. Remember, Dimitri? No, rivers are very useful, especially when one needs a bath. Does it seem like the river is deep? Um, at least ten feet. At its what, deepest. What are the general characteristics? Sorry, it, yeah. like how how wide is it? How fast is the water going? Yep, yep. So uh, it's a slow current. If you were to step in, eventually you could let it, but you could probably swim swim against it. Um, as it, it's resting in the valley here. Um, further up, you notice, and you could hear it rushing a lot more than it is here. Uh, it's about 300 feet or so across. Um, okay. So it's a sizable river, and just oh. as you hit, as you approach the edge of it, you can see the, the flickering light in, a little bit closer, and you can see that it's moving kind of side to side in your direction. Sure. How, how far across is it? 300. 300 feet. 300 feet? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are we familiar with this river? Would we, we've seen it on other spots. Like it's. Yep. Yeah, it's the river that flows on, on the western side of Barovia, north and south. It's called the Luna River. Is there. Do we know that there's. If there's a bridge nearby? Um, you haven't seen a bridge that you've. That you've passed or crossed. I'll be honest. Godfrey, do, you, do you know like where this where the part of me skull head would be would it be on the other side of the river I would assume it would be with her she swam across the river with a head of a dragon 
Well, she probably didn't swim. I do not have all of the answers. I am sorry. This is why I needed others. And for all we know, centuries earlier, this river wasn't even here. Well, we either charter a boat or we swim across. How do you feel about swimming across this thing? Sterling, how, um... Don't even say it. No, no. I was going to say, um, uh, how, how, can you tell how deep the river is just by standing in it? Um, <clears throat> I'll take out my 10 foot pole and I'll telescope it out <laughs> and I'll just dip <laughs> that down. Yeah. So as far as you can go, it seems. It, it, there's, there's, a, there's like a, you can tell there's a gradual slope down into the okay. center and you obviously can't get to the center of the river, but from where you are, mm. by the time you get in, it's like three feet or so at the distance of the 10 feet. All right, and do do I feel like, um, do I get the sense that there's horrible creatures in here that will eat us? <laughs> Give me a nature check. Okay. Yeah, that's what, kind of why, what I was asking about with this river. It was like, hmm. are we familiar uh, with the... Sorry. 18. Um... With an 18, you're not sure. Um, you haven't fished or, or frequented the Barovian countryside. Um, mm -hmm. but With an 18? But with the makeup sure. of what you know, of what you've read as a child and all the books you've read and so on, um, it's fairly temperate here. Um, you imagine that with what you faced on land, that anything in the water would be small in comparison. Hmm. Okay. If that makes um, sense. How, how quickly is the water running? Not quick, uh, slow enough that you could swim against the current without an issue. So if the river is going at 10 feet per second and we're swimming at 20 feet per second across a 300. Jesus. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Do not. At what Do angle not. to the shore? Yeah. <sighs> You're swimming at half speed. There's um, no physics checks. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, I'm. I'm not the. I'm not going to be the first one to go in. I will. Just, no, God, okay. Yeah. I'll, Godfrey's like, we must get the moving, and he's yeah, just going to start to... walking into the river. Okay. I'm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready to jump in. I'll, before Sterling goes in, I'll, I'll go like, Sterling, do you mind if uh, if I uh, go on your shoulders? <laughs> um, if if you like. Okay. Uh, okay. So I, I'm really I guess concerned I'll, I'll about the walking. electronic creature going through the water and the really dry guy, the, the beef jerky of a he, guy. He, there's no he's electricity. Not electronic, though. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, magical. It's a, so don't worry, I'm not going to like, my, my batteries aren't going to sure, zap here or anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Godfrey, as you step into the river, some 20 to 30 feet in, you're only about four feet. It's only about four feet deep. It just seems to be getting grad more gradual until you get to a point where you lose the ground and you start to swim. Um, and you imagine it would be cold, but you're stuck in eternal cold, um, which doesn't bother you. And you can tell that some of this river is runoff from the mountains. Um, yeah. You all know that this river runs south from Lake Zarovich, um, basically the entire length or width of Barovia. Uh, Sterling, you get on as well, uh, or, or sorry, uh, Falfer, you get on top of Sterling, and Sterling, you begin to, to swim across as well. I'm assuming okay. you're buoyant enough to swim as a big metal creature? Well, oh, yeah, I, boy, yeah, boy. even so, I, d I don't need to breathe, so I could just pick Falfer up. Like, if it goes above my head, I could kind of, yeah. like, hold him up, like yeah. Simba style. I would say that you probably through. don't float like a human would. Um, okay. And as you begin to walk, eventually the water comes above your head and you start to hold Falfer, you lift him and you've lifted him yeah. basically above your head to the point where you realize it's about a 10 foot depth at its deepest in the middle. Okay. Um, and so you're able to, with your height, hold Falfer and Falfer is just above and it's fairly cold Falfer. Um, yeah. Not cold enough to cause any adverse issues, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's 
fresh. Anyone else? Who's next? I'm following uh, behind Sir Godfrey. Okay. Sir yeah. Godfrey. Can you all give me perception checks? <laughs> sure. Natural 20. Okay. Ooh. Natural 10. Four, 14. Okay. 13. Okay. 16. Okay. 23. Okay. Thank you. Um, Esmeralda's next. Oh, it's actually a, sorry. It's a, it, it's at least a 24. Okay. Esmeralda, you're 23. next. Uh, I rolled a 16 and I'm, yeah, I'm, as soon as I see Godfrey okay. just walk right in, I'm. Okay. So you're all in. basically in a bunch. You kind of come across and you start to come up the other bank. Um, all of you dripping wet, uh, fairly cold. Um, and the dampness of the, of the, um, of the bog of the Martian general is just really seeping into your bones. You feel it. There's no adverse effects from a gameplay perspective, but it's 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 nasty. And the fact that there's no mm. sun here, covered by fog. I'll, I'll turn to you Dimitri. Feel weighted by it. I'll turn I'll turn to Dimitri as he comes out and go like, "You cast a special. I seem to recall you casting something, but I'm not sure exactly. Uh, don't worry about it." <laughs> Me? Something to warm us up, perhaps? No, maybe not. Well, I did have that alchemist fire, but right. it didn't really go so well. Right. I can apparently only warm up something to a cubic foot oh, of okay. non-living material, so I tried. Mm. I was like, will press the digitation work? No. That's the digitation will, will clean you. It, won't, it, can make it will you clean you, it will not warm you. You can do that close. might warm you. Yeah, might warm your cocoa, but uh... what you call my my cocoa? <laughs> okay, you make it up gonna, the other side of. We're the just bank. gonna go past this. Yeah, <laughs> um, you're all soaking wet, uh, Dimitri. It was fairly difficult to come across, but we're gonna say for the sake of brevity that you made it across with your plate armor. Um, but you know, it was it wasn't easy, um, and it took you some more time. And at, at the at the deepest point, you started to get a little worried that it was dragging you down a little too far. Um, as you come up the other side of the bank, um, it's quite clear the standing stones um, are visible from this distance. A dozen moss-covered menhirs form a, a near-perfect circle in the spongy earth. These weathered stones range in height from 15 to 18 feet. A couple of them lean inward as if to share some great secret with their inscrutable neighbors. As you watch, a wary looking peasant woman lurks behind the tallest stone, a rusty lantern clutched in one gnarled hand and a dagger clutched in another. And that is where we're gonna take a break for this evening. Thank okay. you everyone for watching. We're hey. gonna do a quick bio break Oof. and we will be back in say 10 minutes. Be All right, right back. sounds good. Nice. All right. Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building. 
and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier.
All right, welcome back. As I mentioned, um, you've crossed over the Lunar River to the Standing Stones, and you see a woman, dagger in one hand, lantern dangling in the other, as she watches you approach. What do you do? <clears throat> I, I saw you from afar. Were you trying to summon us? And she kind of looks at you and... You're unmistakable, your group. I know of you. You are allies of the Martakovs, yes? Yes. Yes, that's right. We are. Are you Baba Lasaga? <laughs> no. Just smack him. I am Muriel Vinshaw. I am um, an ally of the Martakovs. You, what brings you to Brez? And as she, as you watch, she shifts her eyes and is constantly watching around, partially hidden behind one of the standing stones. When she says that I'm a friend, can I, can I insight check that? Yeah. Like, do I believe sure. her? Do you mean okay. insight check? I have a 21. Yeah. You better. You Sorry. absolutely get the sense that she's telling the truth. Okay. Mm. What brings you here? Has she noticed me yet? Um, no, she has not. She's kind of taking in the party one by one. And as you ask that, her eyes cross you. And she kind of backs off a little bit. And you can see she clenches her dagger a little tighter. These folk and I have something we must do here. What is uh, that? What must you do? Are you uh, familiar with the battle that took place long ago, right in this very spot? No. Don't know what you speak of. Hmm. Well, it was, it was a great battle, and we are here to retrieve the skull of one of the warriors. Warriors? The skull? Like a, like a human skull? Like a? No. Not human. It was uh, the skull of. A dragon. Ah. I've seen this. The trophy of Baba Lassai. You have? Yes. Where? It's, it stands outside her hut. She uses it. I've seen her travel through the air in the skull. Like a she, uses she uses it? Yes. The skull. She, she sits in it upside down and flies around. She sits I'm, in I'm it. sorry, I'm misunderstanding either the scale of the skull or how big Baba is. Baba is your size. Oh my gosh, how are we gonna carry this back? Clearly, we do not have to. We simply climb inside. I don't think we should do that. I don't think we'd all fit. It wouldn't what be right. It would kind of be not very respectful to Argen Vost's head. Exactly, and also we probably do not have the capability to do so. It's probably true. Not that we would want to, Sir Godfrey. I'm just, it just, we wouldn't <clears> do yes. that. Obviously, right. nobody should do that. You no. tell me that Baba Lasaga besmirches the skull of he who might serve and uses it as a vehicle to get around. Yes? 
I instantly start marching away towards wherever. Okay. I, if I see something, I'm going towards it. Okay. He Sir Godfrey he turns is, and he's, he's uh, he is towards the way you right came. Uh, not. I mean, not. Go away. Uh, um, not towards the river. Like, what else do we see? Do we see like uh, the the ruins or yeah, like? Yeah. So the ruins are on the other side of the river. Along the side of the river, you don't see much else. The fog is very thick here, to the point where you can't see much more than sixty to one hundred and fifty feet, depending on where you are. Um, and so at this point, nothing on the span on the expanse of the river left to right. You see that the ruins of Berez are across the river from where you so came. So wait, let me, let me also understand this. We crossed the river. Yeah. We, the ruins were next to us, and then we crossed away from them? Yeah. So you, the, the ruins were ahead of you, some 200 feet, and then across the river to the east, because you were coming south, was, oh, this, okay. was this group of standing stones with the flickering light. I was thinking everything was on the other side of the yeah, river. Sorry. Yes. That makes a lot more sense okay. now. Mm-hmm. So what do you what are why did you call us over here? Because I, I again your silhouettes are an unmistakable, especially the shiny one. Okay. And I silhouettes wanted, aren't shiny. I, I wanted to know why you are here. It's a very dangerous place. Well would you be able Go to ahead, point Dimitri. us in the direction of the hut of Babala Salah? Babala Saga. The Harhat is never in the same place twice. I don't know what means, but what means she moves it, but it's never where I saw that last. But it's always in this valley, always around Brez. But the I fog see. is so thick here, you just never know where she will be. Where does she go on her flying skull? Not where? far. For groceries? Like, where is she going? I do not know. She sometimes to catch goats for her pen. Who knows what other horrible things she's up to. Well, where, where is her pen, then? Does she take that with her as well? No, the pen is by the in the ruins, by the mansion. She keeps goats. I don't know what she does with them. She's trapped several of them from, from the mountains. And again, it's by the old mansion. How is it that you keep yourself so protected in such a dangerous place? I just stay very quiet, unseen. I am the eyes here. I'm here to watch what happens. Uh, do you have some kind of way of, or are aware of a way to summon her, or maybe get her to come to us rather than us chase around a flying hut? Does she have certain triggers? So, I'm not too sure you'd want to... why you'd want to do that? Um... Well, we're, we're planning to kill her. Sure. I've, it, I've heard stories of your... Adventures, you are very powerful. I, I have been told, but she's an ancient and powerful hag. Yes, perhaps we will just simply speak to her first. That is not the point. The point is, how do we get her to come to us? Do you know that some even say she is the, the mother of Strad? Is we no. We've heard she has the stories. been here a very, very long time. Some so say, have I. I see that. Some say she believes that she is still his nursemaid. Okay, nursemaid or mother? I've heard many rumors about her. Some Maybe we'll go let all her goats free and see what happens. Hmm. She probably wouldn't like that. I think she uses them to feed on. I'm not sure. But every I'm once in a while, I hear them scream. If we are going to confront her, we should do so away from, away from her home, where she has extra magic and, and 
Morning Lord knows what's in there. Perhaps. And before Muskoka, before you even think about it, none of us are dressing as goats. I just thought Falfer could, but that's fine. No. I, no. I cannot. Not this time. I could get you one as a mount. Absolutely not. Ha! That is ridiculous. I would look so big on such a small beast. Now, do you know if the Babala Saga is still in contact with Strahd? If the rumors are true, then they are family, no? I do not know. I've never seen the devil come this way. I've never seen her leave Berez. I, I do not know. Uh, she does. She has a habit of building scarecrows who haunt the, the swamp. She fills them with the feathers of ravens. Mm. And what, they come to life or they're just standing there? Yes. I always wonder. Of, of course, they surround her hut in the area. She uses it as security, I guess. I don't know. They're horrible, murderous creatures. Ah. So perhaps it's right that we are a whole river's distance away from her. Uh, she moves her house wherever she wants. I know, but her hut is on the other side of the river. I mean, her, her pen is on the other side of the river. Well, she can move it wherever. But if she stays in this area, then we're not far. So do we want to try to get her away from here, away from the fog, away from her scarecrows? Godfrey, at this point, you're at the, sorry, Godfrey, at this point, you're at the bank of the river. Where do mm -hmm. you go? Every ounce of my bones wants to keep going past this river, but he waits. Okay. He is still not happy. Okay. Can you think of anything that might be useful to us uh, to find or defeat this Babala Saga. I mean, I don't even know where to start. She is... She loves the double strad, I know that. Hmm. She has been here for an age. Perez was abandoned long, long after the river rose and flooded the village. That was centuries ago, I know that. There isn't much left here but scarecrows and a hag. A hag, you say? Her. She is a Oh, hag. her. Oh, of course, right, right. Any relations to a Morgantha? I have not heard that name. Hmm. All right. Well, maybe uh, our best bet is to inspect, uh, and find and inspect a scarecrow. Maybe some way trace back to where she where she is. Ooh, Dimitri, that's an interesting idea. Perhaps we capture a scarecrow. Huh. These sca scarecrows leave footprints. <laughs> hmm. They are they are near undiscernible when they don't move. Yeah, but they gotta if they they gotta go from one place to another. Perhaps Honey. if they if they're around her hut, they must have moved at some point near her hut. Loose feathers, perhaps. It's possible. Well, we got to cross the river again. Let's go. Yeah. Can you give me a perception check? Sorry, who, who was that, Jay? Uh, Muskoka. Yeah. Seven. Oh, 21. Okay. So as you guys are talking, you kind of start to take in these standing stones. And quite clearly, 
uh, on the smaller stones, you can see ancient carvings of bear, elk, hawk, goat, owl, panther, raven, and wolf shapes, all carved into the smaller stones, all animal symbols. Um, and as you kind of look around, you see that the circle is about 100 feet across, and the men here are spaced apart at regular intervals. The stones located at the north, west, south, and east are taller than the other eight stones, which have weather-worn glyphs carved um, and, again, represent different animals. I'm trying to, trying to write it all in. Yeah. Um, so, what is your name again? Muriel. Muriel. Yes, Muriel. Um, uh, what are the, what is the, 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 the meaning behind, uh, these different, uh, standing stones with the runes on them? Do you have any clue about this? They are ancient. I know that, um, of the ancient gods. I believe they were here thousands of years ago uh, of those that settled the valley before it was trapped in the mists, but I have not discerned anything. Can, can hmm. you repeat? Can you repeat the animals for yep. me? I don't know if it's significant or sure. not, but I got to sure. write it down. Bear, elk, hawk, goat, owl, panther, raven, and wolf. Falfa, can you give me an insight check? Yes, I can. That is... So which ones are on the north, south, east, and west? Uh, on the north, so yeah, the stones located the north, south, east, and west are taller. The shorter ones are the ones with the animals. That's a 15, Jay. Sorry? 15. 15. Um, with the 15, you get that she's not telling you the whole truth. Hmm. About the stones. Okay. She's had now, something. listen here. I know perhaps you're afraid and you've survived here for a while and you want to protect yourself, uh, but you know us. We are on the good side here and perhaps you could actually tell us what you really do know about these stones. Persuasion and I'm going to try to persuade her, yeah. yeah. Persuasion check. What's an 11? Okay. She says, um, powerful gods, some time ago blessed this site. It still, still holds a measure of power. Ah. And protection and an affinity to those that can channel beast-like abilities. Does this mean that perhaps you have these abilities and thus are protected here. Perhaps. I'm gonna cast Divine Sense just okay. quietly. Okay. To see if uh, any Celestial Fiend are undead within 60 feet. Okay. Um, you absolutely sense undead. <laughs> And look over at our new friend, <laughs> and the and it tells me the location. Yeah, by the river. <laughs> okay, so just. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I'll look. Cast wind wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm just gonna it, just oh. grabbing at something. Are they? It, it, does the does the goat stone happen to point towards where she's storing the goats? No. Okay. I was wondering if there were if the goat stone had any sort of other significance, because, with seeing as how she's collecting goats. Is there anything particularly different about this stone than the other stones? No. Not that you can so see. So these hmm. stones are laying on the ground, or are they up no, they're, on they're a, they're standing they're up, up. standing up. So they're standing stones, kind of thin stones, a bunch of short ones, and the ones at the northwest, east, at the, at the points 
are taller. And then the other Can stones I, are, are mixed in around. Which are the four tall ones, Jay? Which animals are the four? They aren't. So only the oh, short, they aren't. only the short stones have animals on them. Okay. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna take the, the the parchment out of my pocket with the tree sketch on it, and I'm just gonna show it. To you. We did animals. Let's try a tree. I just want to ask her, like, what, what do you know of this symbol? It looks like a tree. Yeah, that's what I saw too. I'll just tuck it away in my pocket. Um, as idea. you approach, though, you you feel this energy, um, and it, it emanates from the nat from the natural world, and you haven't felt like you still have a connection to your element and, and and to nature. But in this place, as soon as you step between those two, two of the stones to show her this, you feel that it is stronger here. Mm. Like somehow this is a a beacon of sorts, or like a, or a a place of 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 deep concentration of nature magic, like hollowed, but nature nature esque. Yeah, nature esque. Yeah. Can 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 I tell from uh, obviously Falfer was trying to pressure her into giving some answers. Can I tell that she's kind of hiding something based on Falfer's response? Yep. 10. Okay. With a 10, same thing. Um, her response back seemed true and honest. Hmm. How do these work? Do you use these? Do you, have you ever seen anybody using these before? They just make me feel safe. I want to. I want to touch one. I'll go over and like put my hand on a, on a random animal. Which one? Uh, let's pick something that's not going to kill me. Um, <laughs> the the elk. Um, yeah. As soon as you step into the circle, that presence is even stronger. And as you place your hand on the elk, you feel a buzz. Um, like a low hum, off it, reverberating of energy of some sort. Mm. The same sort of okay. hum that you feel when you use your spell casting focus. Jay? Yep. Oh. Can I enter this circle and then cast magic circle against undead? And sure. see, just see what happens? Sure. It takes a minute, right? Yeah. Okay. You begin to cast. When I make that connection in my head, yeah. I think back to the last time I used my totem and it failed. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to reach into my component pouch and just put my hand around it. Okay. And then I, I'll, after waiting a moment, I'm going to take it out and just look at it. At your component, at uh, your totem? Yeah. And just, just ponder for a moment yeah. see if like you, you said that this this was kind of the same energy yeah so i just want to take it out for a second and then if nothing if i don't feel anything then i'll, I'll take it back away um you feel that same hum there is a synchronicity about your totem and the stones in this circle <sighs> goffrey turns his head he's still facing the, the the river but he just kind of turns his body in his head what is going on do they know anything or shall we go find Baba Lasaga I'm just wondering if she's willing to step into the circle all of a sudden zoom, the circle opens up where exactly did you cast it uh, within the stones so kind of in the center of the stones. So it's like like hundred feet. What's the radius of your circle? Ah, uh, good question. Oh, it's only ten feet. Okay. So yeah. So the, right in the center of it, and there's some ninety feet to either or uh, uh, ten feet uh, uh, radius, right? So mm -hmm. diameter is twenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have the forty feet on one side, forty feet on the other. 
And she kind of watches you as you as as you do it. Still holding her dagger. So she doesn't do react. Able... Sorry, go ahead. Would you be able to show me what this particular stone is? <laughs> Which one? It doesn't what, matter. What you, no, I'm just trying you, to get her into the circle. Well, you're in the center. Just, there's no there's no stones in the center. The center are, are the standing stones are are in a circle. Right. And so if you, uh, if you place her right in the middle. But I'm just trying to lure her towards. Yeah. So she starts to kind of walk towards you. Um, give me a deception check. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I rolled an 11. Yeah. She doesn't move. With a plus she... nine to deception. <laughs> she, she doesn't move and she says, um, what is it that you're up to? And she kind of takes a step back, circling around from, from the group. I was just wondering if you could uh, show us if you had any more knowledge to these stones, seeing as how you are the expert and have lived here for so long. I've told you all I know. Oh, it's so frustrating. Like... The stuff I want to do, but I have no reason to do it. Because do I it. trust her. There's no reason to. Um, I, so, I Jay, I, I, she... I, yeah, I don't, though, given that she, you know, I, I did that check. Um, so I will, I'll walk up to her, you okay. know, dim, diminutive as I am, okay. and be like, not us in here. We really would like to make some progress on this. And we could use your help. So, will you please explain to us what it is that you do with these stones? They might help us in our in our search for Babala Saga or in defeating her, perhaps. Okay, give me one oh, more. She said she doesn't know. She doesn't know. She said. Listen. And the and yet she's heard of us and what we're doing. Exactly. Makes no sense. Logic. Persuasion check. Are you intimidating okay. her? Are you attempting to intimidate? Yes. Okay, intimidation check. Okay, so 12. Come on, D&D &D Beyond. She starts to step back and she says, I think I'll be going now. At, at, at the thought that she's... Stepping back away from you all. At, at the thought that she's deceiving us, I'm going to try to intimidate her from within the circle. I want to... Uh, I want to use my shifting feature. In the circle? And summon a more bestial appearance. Okay. From within her circle of many animals. And I'll tell her, you know more than you're saying. It's time to help us. Okay. As you begin to shift, your teeth begin to grow. Hair begins to stand and grow out of your forehead, basically, and around your, your body. Um, and as you do, she turns towards you, noticing something she didn't notice before, you being a shifter. As you do, you feel this surge of magical energy almost erupt from the ground into the soles of your feet and surge through your body. You now have 20 additional HP. What? And she looks at you, she says, what are you? So that's, that's, if that's a temp, temp HP? Temp, but, but 20. What? Wow. On top of the 10 you already have. You know, I'm... I'm she continues I'm one to of step the Don, back. I'm one of the Don bringers. Oh, I know. I'm here to, I'm here to stop Strahd and stop this madness in this world. It's time for you to stop stepping back and time to start helping. What more do you want me to do? I have told you all I know. I have helped you. I've told you about Baba La Saga and where she's from. And You're not just standing here by the riverbed hoping that we, somebody shows up. You don't know the things you know and have been protected for no reason. We need to know where your loyalties lie. 
If you know the Markovs, you know where my loyalties lie. You help them with the winery. You help them to deal with those issues. I know all about you. I am here to keep eyes on Baba La Saiga to make sure she doesn't do anything questionable to see where her scarecrows go because they have been attacking the winery for some time. I am just here to keep eyes. I saw you. I wanted to help. That is all. Where do we go from here? Where do you, where, where is your best guess of where her hut will be next? <laughs> Last time I saw it, it was south of the ruins. But I don't know. That was days ago. I will start just walking right towards the river. Okay. And, and start to swim across. Okay. I'll go to the middle of the circle, Jay, yeah. and I'll I'll try to do whatever crazy incantation that Muskoka did in the middle, and 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 uh, see if anything happens. Uh, sorry, you start to what? Say that one more time. Yeah, I, I I'm assuming I saw Muskoka go to the middle of the circle and touch the stone and yep. stuff. So, um, so I'm gonna do the same, just yep. in an attempt to yeah to copy what he did. Nothing. Yeah, nothing happens. No. Does anything oh. happen if Sterling goes into that circle, given he has oh, yeah, that no mark no. on his head? No effect. Mm. Okay. 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 So yeah, all so right. I'll follow. I'll follow Muskoka to the river. Okay. You all enter the yes. river for the sake of brevity. You all cross the river <laughs> onto yeah. the other side. You come up again, doubly wet, and uh, just north east of where the ruins are. What do you do? I guess our best bet is south of the ruins, where she said she saw it last. And we and find uh, some clues there. Keep our eyes peeled for any scarecrows. Right. Agreed. Okay. As you begin to head south, you approach a cluster of ruined cottages separated by low stone walls. You see a short stretch of dirt road that, re that still remains intact somehow through kind of the center of the ruins. Um, you can either head along the river to the left, you can head on the road through the, the ruined cottages, or there's a road that swings wide right to some more cottages on the other side, some hmm. four or 500 feet the other way. What do you do? Are all these cottages quite similar? Like we wouldn't think that one might be the hut. Uh, it's all pretty. It's just all rubble, ancient stone buildings that have that have been grown over and enveloped so by not, the swamp over time. They don't look inhabited. Um, all you see is rotted furnishings and the remnants of life at some point, long past. Hmm. Do we see any magic huts? Give me a perception check. <laughs> Probably not. It's a six. <laughs> uh, no, um, but you do see past the cottages. Um, the fog is a little lighter in this area, and you can see past the cottages to the left are the ruins of that mansion that was mentioned. And to the, that's the left. To the right, it appears to be a churchyard with a graveyard to the right in the mm -hmm. distance. These scarecrows. And this is some 600 feet south along the road. Yeah, I was going to ask what Dave just asked, which is, are there any scarecrows around? Uh, perception check for you, Joel. What was your perception check, Dave? That wasn't good. Okay. It was a six. Okay. D&D Beyond, uh, come on. That was a nine. Yeah, no movement that you can see. I'm switching it's out. It's eerily quiet. Does anybody, anybody see any scarecrows? <laughs> Godfrey is going to um, just take a step towards the ruined cottages. Yep. Um, he's just trying to see... Because they said... She said the last time she was seen was at the south. And she also says she never is in the same spot. Um, so she's probably not going to be in the south. 
Um, which direction is the, the are the cottages? Just south of you, um, and you're right at the the basically the onset of them, and mm -hmm. then they stretch for some 400 feet. There's like four cottages on one side of the road, three cottages on the other, and then you can see some more cottages across the way, and all of them, so the, the, the lots are basically 200 by 100 feet deep, and the, the ruined cottages are at the end of one of these, and they're all spaced out. Okay. Um, we're not gonna, he doesn't think we're gonna get anywhere, I guess, by stopping and looking each time, so you're gonna start walking towards the cottages at least, to okay. start just looking and seeing what could be. Yep, to get a better look, here, here's what you see. Julian's got a map of the area. I'm the map. I'm the um, so the river heads I'm... south. Cottages are at the end of that road there, and then you can see the mansion to the, to the southwest. Church to the west of that. Some more cottages to the north. Hmm. Where are we exactly on this map? You are... Uh, on the north end of those of that cluster of cottages, so just at the mouth of that of the cottages there. Okay. On the west side of the river. Okay. Should we continue along the river bank just to be sure? I wouldn't want to attract any attention. That might we be a wise idea we were told those scarecrows were not uh were not um uh good <laughs> from this distance you do hear the faint cry of a goat in the distance hmm. oh sounds promising i'll uh, i'll go into scouting mode try to identify where the goat is Okay, give me a survival check. Um, I'm assuming you're stealthing forward. Yeah, that's Okay, correct. can I get a um, marching order for all of you, please? That's a 21, Jay, by the way. Okay. Uh, I'll be up near the front. Okay. I'll be following. Sterling in the front. Esmeralda following Sterling. The scope is kind of back. <laughs> beside whoever's last. The scope mm. is back beside whoever's last. In his bravery. Last. Okay, where do you want to be, Dimitri? <laughs> I'll bring up the rear. Okay. It's me and Dimitri. Okay. Me uh, and Dimitri. Golfers up front. Yeah. Like like scouting ahead. Yeah. How far? I would. I'm gonna stay within 20 feet of the front of the party. Okay. And then um, Godfrey, where do you want to be? Uh, considering I started to walk towards the 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 villages and they went a different direction, he's gonna probably end up in the middle somewhere. Okay. Done. All right. Okay. Okay, so which direction are you going? You're hugging the, you said the, the edge of the, of the river? Yeah, like Dimitri suggested. Okay, all right. Um, all right, so as you hug the edge of the river, um, you cross the cottages, which are on the right, uh, and quite quickly within some three to 400 feet, you start to see the edges of this mansion. Toward the south end of the village lie the remains of a mansion built on higher ground. It has been reduced to piles of stone and rotting timber. Empty arched windows stare at you. South of the ruin, an untamed garden runs rampant. Surrounded by broken walls that are no longer able to contain it. East of the ruin, someone has erected a crude wood fence forming a circular yard in which several goats are penned. Surmounting the fence post are human skulls. Hmm. So she'll keep goats, but she kills humans. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. How, how hmm. fresh are the skulls? Oh, I thought you were going to ask how fresh are the goats. Can you miss medicine check? Uh, the <laughs> goats are fresh. <laughs> the skulls are 13. Uh, with the 13, um, some of them seem quite old. Some of them seem more recent. Some are bleached. What's quite old, though? Is that like like a skull? I don't know, like what is an old skull? With the 13. Like, I'm over, with a 400-year-old skull. Over, no, over five me. years. Like, not, not, like, oh, within okay. within five to ten years are the oldest, maybe. 
you imagine. And some are some are like fresh off the yeah kebab off right. the shoulders. <laughs> Hmm. <clears throat> Anybody we know? <laughs> <laughs> that's a it's a good question. Like it we are friends are question. under siege all the time. It's, it's one of your friends from Eberron. I'm sorry, I had to yeah. tell you that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the the goat that is. What do you do? The goats. Yeah. Uh, the goats. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Can I? Can we at this point see where the like? where the goats are and see them in the pen and all that stuff, yep. Jay? Yep. Okay. Can we identify, is there any markings on the goats? Do they seem to be a source of, of blood suckingness from the, from the said <laughs> yeah. Babala give me, Saga? Give me an investigation check. How close are okay. you getting to this fence and the goats, goats and stuff? Like, are you, well, are you watching from a distance? Yeah, I'm trying to identify from from a good thirty to sixty feet away, trying to identify if they've been used as, uh, yeah, right. As a, <laughs> okay, so you said sorry, investigation check. Yeah. Yes, um, that is, and I'm going to stop using D and D Beyond once and for all. That's an eight with a <laughs> plus six, so okay, a total of One eight. Of our sponsors. Okay, I know. Uh, oh, include including a plus six. You're saying? <laughs> yeah, exactly, including yeah. a plus six. Yeah, that's no, not great. Um, yeah, you don't see anything different about them about they just the seem goats. like goats they're just walking around they see you one of them kind of trots up to the side of the fence okay just ah. some regular goats huh regular ass goats all right nope, Do just goats we see the goats we see the skulls on the fences does it seem like someone was over here recently Survival we... yeah go ahead sorry no go, go ahead no, that's yeah yeah i'm just trying to I'm just saying, as a saying if They've been bothered the goats any any recently. Survival uh, check. I mean, this couple of the skulls are kind of fresh. That's a sixteen. Okay, with a sixteen, it's pretty clear in the muck on one end of oh, oh, sorry within the the circle. You see that there's a, quite a deep imprint in the center of the pen, and there are humanoid footprints around that imprint. Imprint I'm as open in, up. In is the there mud. a gate? What? Oh, do they look fresh? Uh, within the last few hours, you imagine. Is there a gate to the pen? There must be, right? There's no gate. There's it's, no it's gate. Just, no, it sticks and twigs just... and this ramshackle kind of enclosure. Hmm. Can I bash down an opening? You absolutely can. To free the goats. Free the goats! Free the goats. What do you use to bash it down? Yeah, um, well, first of all, gonna go over to one of the goats. I, d I don't want to goad him, but it would <laughs> behoove me to do the following. Wow. All right. Wow. Uh, yeah. wow. Save all your goat puns for this. Wow. Wow. So he is unsheathing his dim sword. <laughs> Just getting him out of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to find mm -hmm. one that's not feeling too sheepish. Okay. And I'm going to cast... Oh, it keeps going. <laughs> I'm going to cast... Speak with animals. Okay. All right. So, you get, so you're get. So you not you're not tearing down the, the fence yet? Is that... Not yet. Okay. Nah, I don't want to free him yet. We're going to have a little chat first. You're going to have a little chat with the goat. Okay. You cast Speak so, with animals. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to... Yeah. Okay. Uh, Okay, I just got to quickly read this now that I've said I'm doing it. Yeah. Uh, the knowledge and awareness of many beasts is limited by their intelligence. <laughs> but at minimum... Oh, is this, is this, is this a beast? It's a, speak with animals. It's a beast. Then it, then it says I can communicate with beasts. Yep, it's a beast. It's a beast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. animals These can beast. give you information about near my locations, monsters, whatever they can perceive or have perceived within the last day. You might be able to persuade a beast to perform a small favor for you at the GM's discretion. Okay. All right. Uh, put my hands on his horny little head. Okay. So wait. Say... The, 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 this pen is is about five feet tall. So the goat that's approached you, okay. you, you kind of reach over. Is it, is it touch? <laughs> no, it's not touch. I don't have to touch him. Okay. <laughs> I don't have to touch. And I just you, felt like. 
It yeah. was dramatic. And as you get closer, there are there are nine goats in the pen, and you count fifty some odd skulls on top of this posts around this pen. Oh my gosh. Um, actually, we have the pen right here. I don't know why I'm not using it. Yeah, I'm just finding did this so hard to relate to without a did visual he representation. Say 15 or 50? 50. 50. 50. Five yeah, zero. I don't know. Is 15 less Five shocking? Zero? 5 50. zero. Yeah, Five zero. 50 seems shocking. 15 seems like meh. Hey, no. Godfrey did say this person is 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 not easy to deal with. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> true. <laughs> true. True. Mm-hmm. But uh, like 50 yeah. is a platoon. Mm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like it's a, it's a significant amount where, of people. Where, where are the rest yeah. of you? Watching in confusion. <laughs> Muskoka gets all of a sudden gets start going. <laughs> okay, okay. So you guys are just all around. I'll just put you all around. That, here. Do I speak goat or do they speak common? That's what I want to know. You speak goat. goat. They do not speak common. <laughs> okay. okay. So this little kind of white and brown goat has come over to you. Looks up at you with these eyes. Like, are you gonna feed it? <laughs> um. And yeah. what do you say? We're in a petting zoo. Great, great. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> a petting zoo of doom. And as, sorry, to get to this pen, you crossed kind of a, that, that overgrown garden that exists just south of, or just north of where you are, below where you are there, mm-hmm. your characters. Oh my gosh. What do you say? Okay. So I go, hey, hey, Mr. Goat. Hey. We got 10 minutes, so we got to make this quick. Ah, uh, sorry to do this to you. It's probably really weird for you. Uh, to be honest, it's not really all that normal for me either. But I'm wondering if you can tell me how you got here. Food. How? Food. Food. He said food. No, you didn't get here by food. How did you get here? You have food. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna give him some. Ah, uh, no, I shouldn't. I'm not that evil. I'm gonna give him some rations. Okay. Not a whole ration. Okay. Let's let's yeah. be serious. Okay. He doesn't need a whole. Just ration. a little bit. And he like snatches yeah. it. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. How did you get here? Her. Scary yeah. lady. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, is she here? Is she here now? Uh, here? Now? Now? Where? Where? No, Where? is she? Is Did you hear the inflection? Is she here now? No. Oh, let's not drag this out, Jay. Uh, <laughs> is... A goats have an intelligence of two. I'm just, I'm just playing to the goat's okay. intelligence. Um. Uh. Yeah. Oh my god. And you're telling me about dragging things out. Here now. <laughs> how 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 long have you? How long has it been since she was here? I'll speed it up a little. Uh, um. Two poops and sleeps? around about. Two poops. poops you guys poop every like two minutes. Yeah, longer. Oh my gosh. Not a lot of food. Okay. Uh, where where does she live? Do you know where she lives? Is she gonna bring you to her house? I've never how, been. How there. do goats smell? Can you do you have a good smell list? Do you have a good smell sense of smell? Do goats have a good sense of smell? Yeah. Yeah! Okay, you're gonna help me find her, okay? You're gonna help me find her. I'm gonna start tearing out the, the poles and then i'm gonna stop and i'm gonna tie my rope around his neck yeah and then i'm gonna tear out the rest of the poles okay i'm gonna say you're gonna find her and i'm gonna give you all the food okay can you give me a strength check please strength check yes while this is happening right (laughs) um (laughs) (laughs) how strong is a goat it's a 12 i'm gonna lean over to sterling Sterling's right there. I'm just gonna say, I've never seen anything like it. And all you see is like, like back and forth from 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 Muskoka to this goat. Oh my god! 
Did, um, did he, he always uh, as he gr as you grab I, this post, so. you start to kind of pull the post. What was your strength check? Twelve. Yeah. And you feel it budge an inch, and immediately oh. every skull on top of that fence, its jaw drops wide, and it begins to scream. This blood curdling, oh. horrible scream as fifty of these skulls, all at the same time set off this massive cackling alarm. I quickly run over and start chopping skulls. I know. I cast silence. I cast silence over the center of the pen. Uh, what's yes. the radius on silence? 20 feet radius. Okay. Uh, silence exists around it. Uh, I need to find out how big the pen is just to make sure that it's actually. Um, oh my gosh! We gonna die. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. They're only ten yeah, feet kill. apart. Uh, so yeah, absolute kill. silence all of a sudden falls onto onto the area. I can't silence. speak to the goat anymore, but I'm still In gonna the... I'm still gonna tie oh. him up. Ugh. You didn't take <laughs> out the post yet. What? What's up, Nora? What are you? Oh no! In the silence, can I just start bashing skulls too? Yeah, sure. You start oh. to like psh, break skulls. Yep. Yeah, yeah no. Go, I just, oh, I'm just going to hack I, skulls. I'll go counter. Left and right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, and I'll, and, follow and suit. I'll follow suit. And while they're doing that, I mean, there's sound escaped at least for, because an action is six seconds. Um, it, it's got, it escaped a little bit. He's going to immediately take his sword out and start watching to see if anything's coming, if we can hear anything coming in this direction. Yeah. Give me a perception check. Yeah. Godfrey. Natural 20. Woo! Wow! Nice. That's a 23. Well, at least a 23. You hear the sound of something moving through marsh water. You hear multiple sounds of swishing coming from all directions around you, but specifically from the west. My head you know snaps. Absolutely Sorry, something ahead. approaches. My head snaps to the west, and I say, something has been drawn. And half of them can't hear me because they're in the silent spell. Yeah, I can't hear you. If we can hear, we just can't make noise because we're in the circle. No, right. you, you can't hear in silence. No. Oh, we can't even hear. Okay. You are Nothing guessing. comes in or out of there. It's, it's encompassing the entirety of the, of the fence. Okay, I'm just continuing smashing skulls then. Okay. Same. Same. Uh, I'm. I'll be using my silvered short sword to be slashing skulls. Okay. And they just they smash quite easily when you hit them. Psh, they shatter. Bits falling to the floor. Uh, Godfrey, you you look across, and as you're scanning the west, you absolutely see a creature, um, emaciated, twig-like appendages um kind of doing these like sporadic popping movements and locking. as it yeah popping and locking as it moves <laughs> across the swamp in your direction very inhuman very unnatural does it look like it could be a scarecrow you imagine probably that's what it is okay um i will who, who, who's the nearest person to me? Uh, right now, the nearest person to you is Dimitri. Dimitri's to I your pull, left, just behind, and Sterling is above. I pull Dimitri, I grab Dimitri's shoulder, or whatever he is, whatever I can hold, and I pull him, knowing that there is a silent spell. I pull him so I can get him at least to where I am. Okay. Because um, I'm not in the silent spell right now. Okay. Who's, um, who, sorry, who's smashing skulls, just so I know who's in the silent spell? I, I was, and Esmeralda was. And I was as well. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so sorry, Dimitri is not near you. Sterling is is right in front of you, and he can hear you. He is not in the spell room. Okay, right great, great, great. The, yeah, it's it, it, that's fine. Then I'll turn to Sterling and I'll say something approaches. It looks like scarecrow or made of straw. Okay, so I'll turn on my heel and find a. Uh like start walking towards it 
but not too far from everybody else. Uh, and I'll, I'll just be ready to intercept and kind of cut down if need be. I'm walking with you. I'm not going to just walk, let you walk away. Just more like I'm just trying to alert someone else. Which direction are you heading, Sterling? Um, toward the direction that Godfrey indicated. The west. Uh, yeah, so you see, as soon as he turns and he points it out, you see this this creature, and then it like disappears below the garden, the walled garden, as, as okay. it ap- approaches it. Okay, so I'll just stand firm, uh, ready to swing my vicious longsword at anything that might pop up. Same, I'm, I'm getting in a, um, you see like he kind of gets back into that warrior stance. Um, he hasn't <laughs> been in the stands in a long time, and he's almost itching okay. to swing a sword. Mm. All right. Um, the rest of you, you've all been able to smash five skulls each. How long does a mm. silence last? Uh, I... uh, up minutes. to 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to get the goat tied and then pull the post out. I, I'm not looking behind... I don't know what's going on. Yeah. No, none of you know what's going on. I'm trying to get the goat out so he can smell his way to the. Okay. Lady. Okay. (laughs) To the lasagna. Yeah. So you're able to open up part of the gate. And as soon as you do, that goat tries to take off. And the other goats try and filter out after it. Um, I'd like you to give me a uh, dexterity check to try and catch this goat. (laughs) Or animal handling, maybe. Let's do animal handling. Yeah, that would be better. Uh, yeah, 25. With a 25, you easily kind of lift it and hold it. And it's looking up at you like I thought we were friends. You see it in its eyes, but you can't hear it. Yeah. Uh, sorry, did, is he tied yet? Um, no, you begin to tie him now. Okay, so I'll tie him and then I'll pull him outside of the circle so I can talk to him okay. once he's tied. Um, so you do that. Once he's tied, you step out of the circle. And he's like, Ma, what are you doing? Friends, friends. More yeah, food? Yeah, yeah, well, okay. Yeah, we just, yeah, I'm going to give you more food, but you got to help me find the lady, okay? Let's go find Baba. <laughs> you smell her, okay? Go smell Baba, go. <laughs> okay. Give me a, a persuasion check to persuade this goat. <laughs> Can, can I use food as a helper? Can sure. I give it some more food to, per, to would that give me advantage? Uh, yeah, let's say, fine. Yeah, I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh, that was so close to a one. It's a 19. <laughs> okay. With a 19, it looks at you and it smiles, takes a morsel of food and it takes off. So you have it on the end of a rope? Yeah. Okay. The goat smiled. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not going to just run with it across the field to go and meet Baba La Baba on my own. Prince well, Abubu. it starts to take off. <laughs> so well, it's, it's on a rope. Okay, so it stops at that 50 foot place. You have, you're holding on to it. You yeah. pull it tight and it's continu- It's t- trying to, to head south, run south. Yeah. All of its other no, friends okay, hey guys. have left. But... He he's got he's got the scent. We can't hear you. Should we go? Should we go no, find you, her? Yeah, they can't no, hear I'm, you. No, I stepped out of the circle. No, so they can't hear the you because they're inside Good. the circle. Everybody? No, no. Uh, I thought, Sterling. I thought Godfrey pulled. Yeah. The, the, yeah. yeah. Sterling and Godfrey are outside the circle at the edge of the garden. As you turn around to look at yeah. them, you see Sterling looking out over the garden. Godfrey's right behind him, looking in the same direction. Godfrey has his Side, sword not out. the right. Sorry. Mm-hmm. So not, not behind, he's next to him. Okay, next to him, okay. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah. What do you do? That's where I'll call to them and say, like, the, the goat's, hey, he's, he's got her scent. Something's coming. Let's go. We do not care about a goat right now. But he knows where she is. Something was alerted and it's coming our way. Maybe it's her. Uh, it, Sterling, you see this creature rise out basically like 20 feet inside the garden. 
Can you give me a uh, wisdom saving throw, please? Give me a perception check, Muskoka. It's 13, 16. Um, you feel um, its eyes try and bore into your mind as it like starts to... Who, the goat? No, the scarecrow. Oh. Jeez. It's not all David. about the goat. Yes, this is not <laughs> into the goat mist. Calm down. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um, and but you're you manage to shake it off, um, the feeling that you have, um, and at this point, it starts to charge. I would like everyone, please, to roll initiative. Ooh. Right. Uh, Sterling. Six. Dimitri. Ten. Falfer. Ten. Muskoka. 13. Godfrey. Dirty 20. Um, Esmeralda. 14. Okay. Um, Godfrey, you are first as you see this thing start to dart forward through the garden. Okay, cool. Um, just checking the thing real quick. I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I will see it come for me and the minute it gets into my vicinity, um, I take my long sword, holding it with two hands, swinging it across once, swinging it across one more time, trying to strike this thing before it can continue running. Okay. So I'm gonna do two attacks. Well, you're gonna hold your action because it hasn't quite moved yet. It started to move oh. in your direction. Oh, I thought you said it started charging. Yeah, it, it, it starts, but it's not, it can't actually move on its turn. Gotcha. So, so you can ready that yes. action if you want. Yep. Yes, that's exactly what I'll do. I'll ready an action for, to, okay. to, to attack it. Okay, Esmeralda, can, I, can you give me a perception check, please? I am muted. It's a 12. Um, it's a 12. Uh, with a 12, yeah. uh, you kind of look over and you see that um, Sterling and uh, and Godfrey are over at the garden looking out, but you can't quite make out what's going on. I'm, I'm still going to run over towards them. Okay. So you turn and you run. Uh, mm -hmm. Five, then. As soon as you're out, you see, as soon as you're like halfway to them, you see that they are holding uh, their weapons out towards the garden and you see this creature in the garden facing them and beginning to move in their direction. What do you do? How far away is it from me? Uh, currently, so you got 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 uh, 35 feet. I'm gonna hurl a firebolt at it. Okay. So it's a 21 to hit. That is a hit. Ugh, but only six points of damage. Okay. Um, but you tell as this, as this scarecrow gets hit kind of in the shoulder, it, it, there's a bit of an explosion of straw and material and raven feathers as his shoulder begins to burn, doing more damage than you expected the firebolt to do. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Muskoka, you're up. Dimitri, you're on deck. Yeah, I'm going to... Um, I wanna, I'm going to pull, pull the rope a bit and, and tell it to stop. I want to run to the goat, yeah. untie it, and say, do not go to Baba. Run to feed him and let him go. Okay. And then I'm gonna let the rope lay down in the direction that he was he was running in, so that I can follow it uh, after. Sorry. What, what so you're gonna leave the rope laying on the ground oh, from okay. me. So from me to the goat, the rope was taut. Yeah. And it's it's probably pointing directly in the direction that she was. Oh, I she see. Was in. So I'm gonna leave that on the ground and tell him to go. Do not follow the scent. Okay. Persuasion check. And let him go. The 
Goats are pretty stubborn, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, it's a seven. Okay. He says, thanks, see you later, bro. And he just takes off in the direction south. I, I, I kick up the air behind shirt. its butt. You kick up the air behind its butt? Okay. Can I petition for just see you later, bro, spoken by goat. a goat via shirt? Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a t-shirt. Well, See you later, bro. Battle in the background. See you later, bro. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so I would say that, that that untying him and letting him go was your action. You can still move. Yeah, I'd like to move um, towards the party. Not up to the party, but... It was 50 within, feet, like, though. Within, so like, 50 feet of them. So for you to have moved... Oh, yeah, so that's my... And then you come back, back 30 feet. I gotta pull him back. Oh, you're gonna pull him back to yeah, you? Yeah, that's it. Okay, then. No, 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 I'll, I'll go up, I'll go up, I'll, I'll, I'll untie him. So yeah, so I'll be I'll be further away, that's fine. Okay, so you basically untied him there, more or less. You Off the off camera, you can't see it right now, but yeah. Okay. Right. Um, Dimitri, yep. you're up, Falfer, you're on deck. So I'm still in the silence, yep. whacking Give me a skulls. perception check. Uh, okay, perception. It's a 12. Okay. With a 12, same thing. Um, as you start, you're smashing skulls, you look back and you see Esmeralda run and she shoots a firebolt, which gives you the idea that there's something going on in that direction, even though you can't hear it. Okay, I will uh, dash. Can, so can people inside the silence spell hear, out, hear what's happening outside? No, right? Okay. No, no, yeah. nothing goes in, nothing goes out. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I'll dash to reach the the scarecrow. Okay. Uh, you would have to enter the garden. It's oh, is it like rough? It's in the terrain? middle of the garden. It's here. Uh, oh, so it's. It's moving though, right? It's not just stationary. Well, no, it's well, it started to move, but it hasn't done its move yet because it hasn't had its turn. And you're okay. Here. Then, once I reach Sterling and Sir Godfrey, I'll I'll hold uh, my uh, double attack. In case you're going to ready an attack for when it comes close enough for you to attack. Yes. Okay. And I'm assuming you're going to be right beside Sterling when that happens. Okay. Falfa, you're up. Sterling, you're on deck. Okay, in lieu of D&D &D Beyond not being as great as our other sponsor, Mithril Armory, I'm going to use my spinner, a D20 Sorry, spinner. Sorry, D&D &D Beyond. Um, <laughs> and uh, and I, what I'd like to do, though, Jay, is I'd like to improvise a, a torch arrow with my short bow. So I'm going to take one of my arrows. Okay. I'm going to stick it into the end of my torch and with a, with a hope of improvising a weapon... You're gonna stick the arrow in the end of your torch, the wooden torch. Yep. Okay. And even if it takes a turn to do it, yeah, I'm I'm willing to work on that so that I can then do an attack with a torch arrow on so the like next a turn. Like a Molotov. Yeah, like a Molotov. Yeah, like a like a like a Molotov cocktail arrow. Yes. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So you, you're trying to stick your bolt into the end of your thing. Uh, it's yep. gonna take a, a turn to do that for sure. Your action. Um, okay. You're gonna give me a sleight of hand check with disadvantage, please. Okay. Sleight of hand check with disadvantage. First roll is a, uh, that's a 14. Second roll is a uh, 17. Um, so 14. Okay. Um, all right. You think from what you've been able to do that it's decent enough to attempt it. To attempt it. Okay, okay, and I'll finish off, if I can, Yeah. I'll finish off my turn by lighting it, if that's okay. Yeah, Unless I'll that's an extra action. Reaction, that's fine. Oh, okay, cool. Action. Yep, okay, Sterling, you. you're up. Okay, um, so it's, uh, it's about 20 feet away from me, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna keep a held action that when it comes within range, I'm gonna take my attack against it. Okay. There's three people because they're ready to just like, destroy this thing the minute it comes towards us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. You hear this horrible uh, sound 
from all around you. Um, it's this weird, horrible kind of laughter, this cackle. Um, and the scarecrow right out in front of you makes this sound. And then you hear it kind of echoing all around you in various places throughout the ruins. Um, and it charges. So as soon as it charges, it meets right in the center. Um, you're going to get your held action, Godfrey. So you can make your, your attacks, followed by Dimitri, followed by Sterling. Cool. Um, the first attack is an 18 hit. That's hit. Second attack is a dirty 20 to hit. To hit. Great. That's going to be... Math, 23, 33, 40, 33 plus 8, 40, 41, 42, 41, 41 points of slashing damage. Oh, jeez. All right. Um, wow. You lay into this thing with all you've got, and you imagine that you should have decimated it to twigs with the strength of your blow, but you've noticed that just the makeup of this thing and the fact that it's stuffed with feathers and, and it doesn't do quite as much damage as you imagine it would. That said, though, the crunching sound that occurs from this um, causes it to reel and it opens up and feathers start to basically pour out of it and fly, but it's not quite down yet. Huh. Dimitri, go ahead. Okay, first attack is a natural 20. Okay. It's a hit. And next one is a 26. Next one is a 26. You guys, let me do some more. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, damage. First one is, uh, wow, with the natural 20 is 23 points of damage. With that, and you cleave it basically the opposite direction that Godfrey did, and it just explodes um, into a rain of feathers and twigs as it falls down motionless. Um, and you can all hear movement closing in from all directions. Hmm. Should we try to create a choke point if we go inside the building? So we don't get surrounded? Good idea. Um, where did you go from, uh, uh, Falfer? I guess you would have come probably close to the end here. Clo yeah, I would imagine close close to the end so I can get a sh I can get ready for the shot. Okay, so let's say you moved here. And you're ready for the shot. Uh, I would like Muskoka, Esmeralda. Um, are you immune to being frightened, Godfrey? <laughs> Don't try it. <laughs> are you immune to being frightened? Yes, okay. but if they want to try use an action on me, they surely should. No, it's <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> you don't get to use DM knowledge on scarecrows. <laughs> if they're gonna do it on me, they should try it and fail. Falfer and um, Dimitri, no. all of you, please make um, wisdom saving throws. And if oh. you're within ten feet of me, you can add plus three to that. Oh. So that would be Sterling and um, Godfrey right now. Hmm. But Godfrey's the not two good. who aren't doing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, just but robot, that, robot like man, and right? undead guy. That's Sorry, that's Sterling too. Yeah. So Sterling, Dimitri, Falfer, Esmeralda, and Muskoka. Oh no. Fourteen. Twenty-five. Nine. Sorry. 19. Anybody under an eleven? Yeah, I got a nat one. Okay. Yes. With a nat one, um, you turn to your left. Uh, to, to your right, and you see one of these scarecrows turn the corner around the garden, and he's closing the distance to you. Um, you are currently magically frightened until the end of that scarecrow's next turn. Okay. 
Um, and you're paralyzed. Cool. Um, I got a, I got a ten. You too. So you see a creature back where you are, which is all the way back here by yourself again. And there is a scarecrow closing the distance from these ruins here. Man, I gotta be honest, this looks a little bit like a Van Gogh painting and I don't know where I am. Oh, okay. Well, you were here. <laughs> that is your shield on your back. Okay, yeah. And this is where the Scarecrow is. Good. And you turn as the Scarecrow is basically like running and then on all fours again, and then running and on all fours as it hisses in your direction and lets out that horrible laughter. Uh, you are you, you turn around and you are basically paralyzed in fear, and you uh, all so like actually paralyzed. I'm just, I, just, I I can't move. I can't do anything. You can't do anything. You're magically paralyzed. And in the distance, you all hear oh, a cackle <laughs> and this horrible laughter that booms across the ruins. And that is where we're going to end the session for Ooh. this evening. <laughs> no! <laughs> Holy shit. Why did we say it at the same time? Two we were in the same exact pitch. That was, that was creepy. Yeah, that was creepy. That was creepy. <laughs> that was... Thank you, everyone, for watching tonight. Remember that this coming Monday, there is not a stream. It is Easter Monday. Family first. Enjoy your time. But then in two weeks, um, we will be back here in Berez. Um, so fun. Uh, to, we're gonna do the draw for the Curse of Strahd digital copy, and the winner is I love with in love with my Mac. <laughs> so am I. Um, congratulations in love with my Mac. Uh, you win a digital copy of the Curse of Strahd book for D and D Beyond. Enjoy that. Uh, again, folks, uh, this coming Thursday, Aftermath will be the after show for this episode. We'll have some of the cast on to discuss their experiences uh, and how they felt about tonight's session. It was a fun session. That was really, really great. Um, and we're very excited to come back in two weeks. If you're interested in being part of the Discord uh, and our roleplay service, playing as Vistani to create items and craft things for the uh, party and interact with them on an ongoing basis, uh, check out our Patreon, www.patreon.com slash realmsmith, and you can jump in even at a dollar just to check it all out as a Barovian all the way up to a legendary hero. Um, we just had somebody actually upgrade, like I said, to a legendary hero last weekend, uh, and we had this really cool moment, and you have got exclusive. It's really cool. Anyways, check it out. Have fun. Enjoy, folks. You have a wonderful week. And we'll be happy back. birthday, Jason. Oh, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Jason. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. To you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, birthday Jason. Jason. Happy birthday, birthday, birthday to, to you. you. How did the three Ooh. of you, four of you, actually harmonized? <laughs> that was impressive. Oh, Over Zoom. Zoom. That's, a, that's, a, that's a feat. That's that a is feat a sure. feat. It just shows you how talented our group is. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I appreciate it. Today is my birthday, and uh, thank you for doing that. That is really, really sweet. All right, everyone. You guys have a great night. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye.